Redditors have grew up filthy rich, what did you think was normal till you learned otherwise? My family was broke as heck, but my mom was, and still is, a teacher at this really nice private school which was the only reason my brother and I could attend. Everyone's parents were doctors and lawyers, you get the idea but why brother and I were being raised by a single mom who had just relocated, we were living in a trailer park in the middle of nowhere for the cheap butt rent, we didn't always know when the next meal was coming. One day, during lunch, the kids notice that all I have is a peanut butter sandwich and a tiny bag of pretzels. One dude says wow, you must really not be hungry, since I was 6 and just as clueless to any other lifestyle as he was. I just straight up told him we don't have any more food. I had to explain it a couple of times before he realized. Lunch bro sheepishly asks if I would like some of his food. That orange and baggy of cheetahs were the start of a now 20 year long friendship. I thought until the start of high school that a $100 bottle of wine was cheap. Expensive ones rise several thousands after all. At the end of the year we decided to offer our retiring teacher a bottle of wine and he said, don't buy a $100 bottle. I made a joke about how picky he was and made a fool of myself. Reminds me of the movie Meet the Parents, where the guy goes to the local grocery and tries to get some good champagne to impress his in-laws. All they had was mum. When he mentions to the cashier that he was looking for something more expensive, well, you could get a whole bunch of mums is the reply. My roommate in college would order a catered meal for every dinner, like he'd have a restaurant bring so much takeout that they'd bring it in those aluminium trays and heaters underneath and a server would stick around to dish out the food and clean up afterwards. It took us a couple months to realize that he thought this was totally normal behavior and was confused why we made such a big deal about it. He saw it as kind of a splurge but not crazy out of the ordinary. Until I just pointedly asked Kevin, the server, who else he did this for in the entire city we were living in. Um, just him, my roommate just looked shocked. The interesting thing was the fallout. This was only part of the reality check that college dealt my roommate. He really was raised to think catered meals and drivers and massive wardrobes were the norm and he felt deceived. That's how his parents lived. That's how his friends lived. He'd never known anyone who didn't live that way. I mean it's hard to imagine but he really did feel like his whole life was a lie and he felt really dumb for not seeing it before. So he really swung the other direction. He rejected his parents help. Started working on his own got crazy tight about finances, and became honestly annoying about money, but it was a learning curve so we were patient. It was inspiring to watch someone take control of their life. We never have sympathy for the wealthy, but it was a painful growing experience for him and I was proud. I think this should be upvoted more because nobody really thinks about how much of a shock to the senses this kind of realization would be. I know I still can't comprehend it completely. My 8 year old came home from school last year and told me that not everyone had a tennis court. In fact, he said, nobody but he had a tennis court in his class. He was amazed that other kids played in the street, instead of their own tennis court. The tennis court is old and crappy, but it makes a great play area, paved, and with a 10 feet fence around it. I have many kids, who have many friends. It's nice to have a pen to keep them and during parties. I think the term you're looking for is prison yard, not tennis court. This girl I knew was rejected from a law school because her diversity statement was written about her struggle of riding commercial to Europe for the first time. I was poor growing up, and most of my friends were poor middle class. There was this one dude who drove a crappy, falling apart beta car. He was always hustling to and from work, trying to make a buck to afford repairs for his car. We all thought he was lucky just to have a car. One night, after we had been friends for a while, he invited a bunch of us over to his house. Even offered to pick us all up, since no one else had our own wheels. Imagine our surprise when we rolled up into the ritziest neighborhood in our area. Dude lived in a freaking mansion, indoor pool, elevator, the whole nine yards. We were flummoxed. Someone said dude, we had no idea you were rich. His answer, 
I'm not rich, my parents are. They worked very hard to get that way. At first we felt bad for him. Freaking filthy rich parents and dude is working his butt off to afford a beater. Now I get it though. Just wanted to point out. I grew up in a major east coast city with a good, though sometimes annoying, public transportation network. Having a car wasn't a necessity by any stretch but it did make life a bit easier. Having a car at 17 of any sort was definitely impressive in my circle. It was one of the outer boroughs of NYC. Interesting to know so many other cities have annoying public transportation. Through the entirety of elementary school I would buy ice cream for my class on Fridays at lunch. The money came from flipping Pokemon cards, paper jewelry, and of course, mostly from my dear old dad. It doesn't seem like much. But we all came from a very poor rural town with one store and one school. Our playground at school was a stretch of course pavement. It was like the 60s in the 90s. My dad had just started up his own machine shop in town which employed 10 or so. My slight business sense as a kid coupled with my dad's business sense made us rich. Everyone would call us boss man which is probably where I began realizing that being a boss man wasn't the norm. My dad taught me a lesson after he realized I was spending all my money on the other kids. If you want to make a lasting impression, let's really give something back and fix up that old playground. My dad's machine shop then produced and installed an entire playground system for our school at no cost. It was that day I knew what it meant to be a good man and that I wanted to be just like my dad. And what's funny is that I wanted to be absolutely nothing like him once I hit the teenage years. But now, I'm a grown man and a splitting image of my dad in the flesh as well as in character. I appear to have gone off on a tangent. I'll stop the story here. My dad gets a stonewall look on his face as if his soul is squirming when people are more than gratuitous toward him. I guess it makes him uncomfortable or he's just unusually modest. He's always been the you would have done the same. A handshake. And that's that kind of guy. I want to show him this thread but I know he'll tear up and then I will too and then it's all aboard the crybaby train. That was really cool of your dad and his company to do that. And sounds like you learned the lesson he was going for. When I found out my dad paid off a multi-million dollar mortgage in less than 5 years, that's when I knew one was not like the others. I grew up dirt poor and, when I met my husband, was dirt poor myself. He came for an upper middle class family where everyone got college paid and they always had new things. My husband has never been unemployed and doesn't understand how someone can be unemployed. I remind him all of the time that when he met me, I was unemployed. Yeah, but you just had some crappy things happen to you. That's all. Um, yeah, honey, that's how it works. Complaints about airport security. We never got around to owning a plane, but most of our family friends who we would vacation with would share theirs with us. Basically you show up at the local airport and hop right on. If we ever took a commercial jet, we had a prepaid tsar pre-check that let us zip through our own security line. I never understood why people would say they planned on heading to the airport 2 hours before their flight. Comma we never got around to owning a plane. Sorry, peasant. This thread is reserved for the filthy rich only. Flip side, growing up in the projects, I thought that people that lived in trailer parks were rich because they had their own house among many other odd beliefs. My mom never worked, instead she stayed at home and raised each one of her four sons in succession. So there was a point when I was shocked to learn that other kids moms had jobs and didn't just play them watch them take them on excursions every day. Obligatory. We were never rich but I feel like this qualifies. Also mom got her masters and had to go back to work so that we could pay the mortgage and have health insurance once dad's business took a crap at the beginning of the recession. My boyfriend's family was pretty poor compared to mine, so when we discuss our childhoods we notice some pretty glaring differences for example, he was telling me recently about how they would leave the kitchen stove on, and open, in his house for the heat in winter, no central heating air something I completely took for granted as a kid. I think people start with not filthy rich because everyone looks up and sees people with more money than them, rich and poor will always be relative. So I can't help but start with saying that while my parents aren't filthy rich, it never occurred to me that it wasn't that normal to have a fully owned house without any mortgage. I thought renting was something only people in their 20s had to do. I thought doctors and lawyers lived in the poor part of town. 
you know, the guard gated communities with golf courses in them. I don't think I realized they weren't poor until I got to college. Ro, this reminds me of when I used to live in Santa Barbara. We were dirt poor college students living in heavily subsidized campus housing. And I had a conversation with a man in his mid 60s who told me he really wanted to retire but he couldn't find anyone to take over his job because nobody in his line of work could afford to live in our area. Dude was a pediatric surgeon. I wasn't the one who was filthy rich, but I went to a fancy private school from 9th grade to 12th grade on scholarship. There were tons of kids there who didn't know exactly how rich they were. I remember one girl complaining about how her parents were buying a third house in Florida but that it cost 1 million less than her main home, which was around 4-6 million. I have so many stories where the rich kids from my school didn't realize just how rich they were. It was pretty sad. Only middle class, but I realized I was globally rich when in the marines. Filipino folks were taking our trash to fix their roofs. Now I am internationally rich too. I remember going to India and giving about 10 rupees, roughly 10 pence or 15 cents, to a homeless woman. She was basically in tears. It's as if I saved her life or something. That was a big wake up call. My parents are very well off. When I was growing up that wasn't the case. Though, my dad was working in Dong his masters part time and my mom stayed at home. We lived in a very small condo. My mom always tells a story about my, much wealthier, relatives coming over with their son he ran around the whole house and came back so confused. He asked my mom and dad where the rest of the house was. Anyways the point, my parents are quite well off now. I'm older and don't live at home anymore. But I have a much younger sister who does. Watching how growing up with money has made her is painful. She is incredibly spoiled, entitled and quite frankly, a brat. I feel sorry for your dad, having to dong his masters. At least it was only part time. But that's real dedication to the family. Respect. When my stepdad started college, he went out to dinner with his friends. When they got their bill and were getting ready to leave, he was really confused. He had never had a one course meal. He was under the impression the next three would be coming any moment. My father was a successful chemical engineer manufacturer and private pilot. I spent my childhood in a gated fly-in community with a fully functioning airport. Not only did we have a garage full of your everyday vehicles, we also had an airplane hangar full of classic cars that my dad enjoyed restoring, World War II era warbirds, as well as the modern twin engine planes he used to fly to business meetings. We owned property in Nantucket and St. Martin and we're constantly taking extemporaneous vacations. John Travolta would walk over from time to time and shoot the crap with my dad in our hangar up until he made Pulp Fiction and was slingshotted back into relevancy. I remember having play dates with his son, Jet, was also family friends with well-known NASCAR drivers and would spend a lot of time over at their mansions hanging out with their kids, driving around on golf carts and shooting paintball guns. Everyone I knew had airplanes, nice cars, big homes, and what seemed like an endless supply of wealth. That was my normal. When I was about 4 years old, I made a new friend at school and was invited to spend the afternoon over at his house. It was an eye-opening experience to say the very least and when I returned home, still very confused, I remember saying something along the lines of, Mommy, they live in a really small house and they don't have an airplane hangar. My mother was slightly horrified at the realization that this was my reality and had to explain to me that not everyone has the same things that we have. Life has changed a lot for me since the 90s. When I moved away for college, my dad suffered a series of mini strokes which subsequently caused progressive dementia. Towards the end he couldn't even tell you what year it was. My father passed away in January and I've been spending a lot of time recently looking through old photo albums and listening to stories. Maybe that's why I felt compelled to share all of this with you guys. Being rich is nice. Don't get me wrong. But I would give it all back in a heartbeat just to spend a little more time with the dad I used to know. The man who was the master of his own universe. There was still so much to learn from him. But what I'm left with are the cherished memories of my childhood that will forever put into perspective just how lucky I really was. Discovering that other people's parents didn't have 100 plus properties in their investment portfolio. We had quite a frugal lifestyle, 
So I just assumed that most middle class had a few investment properties and that's where all the money went. My mom was really into fashion. So I used to get rid of old clothes pretty much every season and have new clothes almost constantly. I realized this wasn't normal around middle school and high school when people talked about having their clothes for years at a time. Old habits are hard to break, but I shop a lot less than she did. At least we gave the old clothes to goodwill. Watching sports center reruns all morning in college and complaining I was bored. A poor kid finally schooled me on the fact everyone else had to work to put themselves through college and become indentured servants to pay off their student loans. Oh wow, still not getting a job though. 1. I thought every family had staff. We had a chef, gardener, chauffeur, two nannies, handyman errand guy, took care of the house. Picked up dry cleaning, bought supplies, washed the dogs, handled maintenance and repairs, and two maids. These were full time and several lived with us. We had a host of part time staff as well. When I went to college, I was shocked by how everyone took care of themselves so well, when I barely knew how to tie my own shoelaces. 2. My private school had men of Forbes 500 billionaire families, kids of world leaders, and general global establishment types. If we ever needed something anywhere, someone's parent or relative or friend would have a connection. I just assumed that's how the world worked. 3. Money was always just an afterthought. Nobody ever asked anyone how much something cost. If you just liked something, you got it. Again, interacting with regular people in college was a huge eye-opener. 4. Respect. Everywhere I would go, either with my family or friends or their families, we were treated with what I understand now is a ridiculous amount of respect. It's hard to explain this one, but I think others in the same situation understand. 2. That is how the world works. It just works better for you. Serious question. What kinds of jobs or circumstances allow people to make millions of dollars per year besides some CS and some stock investors? I used to be really poor. I mean like really poor. Sometimes my parents wouldn't eat just so I could. But, over the course of the next 18 years my parents did start to make a lot of money. Dad has a building company, and my mom runs an online shopping business. Altogether they earn £200,000 after taxes. I guess money really did change me for worse at the beginning. I was spoiled, and wanted everything that there was. And my parents did buy me most of the things. A new phone here, new Ralph Lauren suits there, going abroad etc. I never could experience these things as a child, so they tried to make up for it later on. But then I noticed that people started to get jealous of all the things that I had, and me spending money like it had no value to me at all. The negativity surrounding my personality and character is what actually changed me from showing off my wealth to me becoming who I used to be, just with few more zeros in his bank account. We weren't insanely rich, but upper middle class. I never realized that other kids didn't get to travel as much as we did. By the time I graduated high school I had been to 10 countries and countless states. Now as an adult working two jobs to keep my head above water, I'm grateful for how lucky I really was. This wasn't me but a filthy rich friend didn't know that filet mignon beef tacos was not the norm. I grew up in a foreign country where, by comparison, we were rich. Coming back to the US as a young kid I learned pretty quickly having house staff was not the norm. I stopped mentioning those things in conversations with other kids. We had a house boy, I mean what position is that even? I grew up pretty isolated. So I didn't realize that there were smart poor people who just weren't told they were smart every day of their lives. It never occurred to me that people could be smart and not praised for it. My family used to be pretty rich when I was really young. Never had to look at prices when shopping. Not anymore though. Everything is embroidered to a certain point. From zebras to toasters. Everything appears to be embroidered when you don't know any better. I can't think of any reason why, but the patterns in the air just really mess with your perception. See, when you're rich and have all this extra money, there isn't any reason to not get personalized everything. So everything else seems like it was embroidered by someone or something. One thing I've learned in life is that anyone who is well off to any degree believes the following. 1. They are middle income. 
2. They are not rich, because they know people substantially more wealthy than themselves. 3. Only the unemployed have money problems everyone else earns enough to live on because the world is fair as long as you work hard. I grew up in one of the poorest areas in my state being looked upon as the rich boy because my dad was a teacher. People living in this area almost exclusively were unemployed or working factory jobs. Little did they know that my father gave most of his pay to the church leaving us worse off than some of the kids who thought I was rich. Despite this, I knew I was lucky because I was never hungry, always had a roof over my head, even if it was a cheap and nasty rental, and did reasonably well at Christmas multiple presents instead of just the one. Later in life I found myself working at a bank in their head office alongside people earning very healthy six figure salaries, who had never set foot anywhere near an average income suburb, who were all convinced that they were average, that they worked hard for their money, and that their life wasn't that easy, bulls on all three counts. I found it incredibly difficult to not scream at these people, particularly when often their job was to try and figure out ways to profiteer off of people earning significantly less than themselves. Getting best medical care and $100 allowance every week. I got paid more by my dad than I did with my first job. I had a friend whose dad managed a bunch of Budweiser factories and she sent me a picture of her new car which was a Lamborghini. I sent her a picture of my 1993 Honda Del Sol and she then realized she was rich. Chauffeurs who drive around rich people. What are some of the weird shocking conversations you have overheard? Not a chauffeur but this happened because of a lack of one. Basically, a guy I used to know back when we were teenagers, 17 years old, had a lot of money. We just never knew how much until I was invited to go on holiday with him and some other friends. All expenses paid of course. Anyway, we took a taxi to an area where this guy wanted to buy an apartment and wanted to show us so we went with him and ended up spending the whole day walking around the area. We got tired and eventually wanted to go back to the house but we were so far away that walking was not an option unless we wanted to walk for about 3 hours. Neither of us had enough cash to pay for a taxi, and back then taxis didn't accept cards. This was around 2000 or 2001 BTW, so this guy rings his dad and asks if he could send a chauffeur to pick us up. But the chauffeur turns out was busy doing some deliveries for the dad. So instead the dad says there's a Mercedes Benz dealer shop near where you are. I know the manager there is I've bought several cars from them. Just go there and buy a there and buy a there and buy a there you can leave it in the house and we'll figure out how to bring it home later. So we went to this dealer shop and somehow in about 30 minutes the manager did all the paperwork and we ended up driving back to the house in a brand new Mercedes C-Class. Which we used for the rest of the holiday. Frick. Billy Bob Thornton was doing radio press for a movie about to come out, meaning he had to stop by 6-7 radio stations for interviews. He wanted to have a cigarette in the vehicle on the way to the next interview but I had to let him know our company has a no smoking policy in our vehicles. He asked me to call the owner to make an exception but the owner said no and it's a $250 cleaning fee if he smoked in the vehicle. He asked to stop by a bank, came out and handed me $5,000 cash and said here's for the whole goddamn pack. He smoked in the car the rest of the trip. Later I got up the nerve to ask him if that's the most expensive pack of cigarettes he's ever smoked. All he said was not even close never explained it further. I think about him often. Picked up a wedding party, bride, bridesmaid, and bride's boyfriend who was paying for the wedding. They had a magnum of champagne and we drove around for quite some time while they snorted C in the back. They were using rolled up $50 S and $20 S, then tossing them to me in the front seat as tip money. I dutifully brushed off each bill and added them to my wallet, pretending not to know what was going on. The couple argued off and on about showing up to the wedding. Apparently she felt weird about getting married and he was trying to convince her it was a good idea. Finally dropped them off at the church and he slipped me a matchbook with his name and number written on it. But yeah, it was the late 80s and I was a young woman. One of the only female limo drivers at the time in that city. Scored a sweet leather jacket with the tips from that night. So many weird stories. I was a bouncer at a club in the 80s and only 18. I never knew C. Sex and tanning booths were so common. It was like a pulp novel unfolding in front of me. I was so naive. 
When we were in high school, my friend used a caddy at a local country club. One guy really liked him and asked if he would be willing to drive him around while he went out partying. This was like 2003 and in a pretty rural area. My friend agreed. He picked the guy up at like 8pm. Right off the bat, the guy handed him $200. He went to a bar for a little bit. My friend sat in the car. The guy came out, handed him another $200 and told him he had to visit his friend real quick. He went and got a bunch of coke. They went to another bar. He handed my friend another $100 and told him to look out the window and turn up the radio. He then blew several lines. He came out a couple hours later with a girl. He was married with kids. He handed my friend another $200 and they went back to her house. After they fricked, he came out and asked to be taken to the beach. At this point it was like 2-3 am. My friend said that the guy slowly walked around the beach, went into the water up to his ankles, in his shoes, threw a bunch of rocks into the water and then sat in the sand for about 45 minutes. He came back to the car and asked to be driven home. When they got out of the car he hugged my friend and gave him $500 and asked him to never tell anyone what happened. None of us really believed my friend when this happened until the guy he drove got arrested for assault and possession of C like 6 months later. I used to know a chauffeur. He ended up driving around some big stars. He was big dude, like 6 feet 8 inches and super muscular. His best story was when he was driving around a few WWE, WWF back then, stars, and they awkwardly asked him to not get out and open the door for them because he'd make them look smaller. Friend of mine worked for an upscale concierge chauffeur service. His most memorable moment came when he lost Marie Osmond. Fairly simple gig, go to airport and pick up Marie Osmond, who was to be the featured entertainer at a private event. Plane comes in, he meets her. She has Kara and bag but her checked suitcase, containing her stage dresses and makeup, is missing. She is unflappable, though, asks to be taken to the nearest upscale mall. He does as instructed. She goes into a large upscale department store, selects two long sequined cocktail dresses and goes to the fitting room to try them on. Without him, of course. Unfortunately, there are two entrances and exits to the fitting room, and Marie Osmond exits out through the other side and cannot find my chauffeur buddy, who is waiting patiently on the side she'd entered. 20 minutes passes. He thinks something has gone wrong, so he grabs a female manager and asks her to go into the fitting rooms and ask for Marie Osmond. The manager thinks she is being pranked and declines. Chauffeur buddy is in mini panic mode now, running wildly around the store asking random customers have you seen Marie Osmond? Have you seen Marie Osmond's store security is summoned and he is asked to leave the premises right now. He calls his employer and tells them he has lost Marie Osmond. The employer doesn't have her cell phone number but has her agent's number and he is not accepting calls. She has in the meantime taken a cab to the gig, thinking she has been forgotten. Lots of apologies eventually ensued and there were no repercussions. Buddy of mine ended up picking up a Netflix producer while doing Uber. He said they had a great conversation as he brought him to his hotel. The producer invited him up for a drink and since my friend was a film student he thought it'd be a good idea to go and try to get some good networking in. They hung out for about an hour when he asked my friend if he knew of any massage places with happy endings. He didn't but the guy paid him $500 to bring him to the closest massage place which was only a few miles out. Upon dropping him off he gave my buddy a card and said there's a big party festival I'm hosting. That's your ticket in. I'll let you know then if I get that happy ending haha. He got the happy ending. Not a conversation and not me. But definitely weird. Shocking. And disgusting. A friend of mine who worked in music was in a limo with Robin Thicke and a load of dancers and models driving round London. They are all just chatting and whatnot. And out of nowhere, Robin Thicke just starts going down on one of the models. There was an awkward split second silence. And then everyone just carried on and ignored it. Holy crap. I have a Robin Thicke story too. One of the administrative assistants at my work went to Vegas and met Robin Thicke there. He asked her at the bar if she wanted to come back to his room. When she said sure, he whipped out an NDA to have her sign. Dude cheated on his wife so much that he had paperwork drawn up so the women couldn't tell on him. My aunt was a driver for actors. 
mainly when they'd have shoots here in Oregon. She drove Woody Harrelson around for a time and she said he smoked weed constantly and she was always worried she'd lose her job lol. I used to drive limousine and taxi. One time I got the manager of a fairly famous Canadian band in my car asking me where to buy coke. I had no idea where and I told him that. So his bright idea was to find a prostitute, hire her and ask her. I told him I couldn't help him pick up prostitutes either. He was disappointed but understood. He had me drive down a well known street until he saw a prostitute. He asked me to pull over, got out of the taxi, pay the fare, and then immediately flagged me down again as a new ride. I knew what was up, but whatever. He gets back into the car with the prostitute and she tells him exactly what house to go to for some coke. I take them there and wait a bit. They come back out and I drive him back to the venue. Then he offers me two free tickets to the show which I gladly accepted as love that band and had seen them three times. Alas. Since I was still working during the show, I gave them away to two friends who had never seen the band. They had a good time and I had a fun story to share with them about how I scored those tickets. Not really a shocking conversation and hardly a famous person, but it was interesting how easily and full of trust people can be about searching out and buying drugs in a strange city. For the record, this was 2003. My dad was a chauffeur when I was younger and he told me of one story driving the director of a company down the road with the Blackpool Illuminations and the company limousine. The director was standing up out of the sunroof with his arms out waving at people as he drove past. What the people on the street didn't know is that in the back of the limo there were two prostitutes blowing him. Out of all of the answers this is the one that made me go yep. That sounds about right. Freaking Blackpool. I've have multiple people pay me handsomely to let them smoke weed in the car. Heard a French guy yelling at his wife that $10,000 was too much to pay for two bracelets that she bought. Also overheard a lot business deals with absurd amount of money referenced. Like tens of millions. I've had conversations at work where I've said just buy the two of the dang things, it's only $25k. Kind of crazy to from that to debating if I wanting to keep my HBO subscription that night. <laughs> Drove LIMO at Marquette University during undergrad and grad school. Some of the students that went there were obscenely wealthy. Limos are the vans that drive drunk students anywhere on campus and a few blocks outside of campus. A couple things I remember randomly from it. 1. Drunk guy leaves his wallet on a van and another driver calls it in so me and another supervisor can take it to campus police. We pick up the wallet from the driver and open it to get the student it so they know who to email. There had to be a few grand in there and when we called the kid to tell him about it he told us we could just keep it because it was too far from his dorm to bother picking up. Okay. 2. I picked up a couple girls from a Kayo and they spent the entire ride talking about how it was ridiculous that one of the girl's parents planned on making her pay for her own apartment after graduation and there was nothing even livable under 2k dollars a month. The school is in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. 3. Mardi Gras is the name of a campus ministry trip where you use your spring break to build houses and drink in somewhere that doesn't get snow in April. One of the people on my van was getting a free night of drinks from his buddies because he paid for everyone's trips. I think it was like $1,500 per person if I recall correctly. 4. Rich kids are rich but foreign rich kids are usually on a different level. Was talking to a guy from Spain who said his dad did something with movies over there. IDK. He had an actual Rolex on and ended the conversation with so anyways. Do you know where to find an EM? 5. It is a free service and a frat star tried to pay me for the ride with a Ziploc baggie of C. I said no and he called me a legend and left a $20 in the cuff holder before I realized it. This is not a limo story, but this thread reminded me of a rich guy story. My daughter played soccer for many years and at one practice, a guy drove up in a Ferrari, got out, and started talking to another of the dads on the team. After a few minutes, the guy left and another of the dads went over there and asked him who that guy was. He replied that the guy was his lawyer or something. I come to find out years later, that that guy in the Ferrari was a multi-millionaire had one and only one client, that dad. And his only job was to handle the dad's charitable donations. So this dude got filthy rich donating millions of dollars of somebody else's money and taking a percentage off the top. The dad, who was apparently worth several hundred million dollars, never came across as rich at all. 
He wore sweats to and was at every practice and game. He drove a Camry. Had been married to his average looking wife for like 25 years. Stuff like that. Acted like a normal guy like the rest of us. My sister was in a limo once and asked the driver about his most interesting ride. The driver said that he picked up some models who were going to a pet a demonstration. I'd rather be bare than in fur or whatever it was. He got to the location. They stripped naked in the back of limo. And he waited until they were done with the photo op. I remember that. The girl from Walking Dead was in that shoot. Not a chauffeur, but seemed like a good chance to remind people of the story of John Boner. At the time, Speaker of the US House of Representatives, third in line for the US Presidency, not knowing how to use Uber. As the story goes, one of his aides downloaded the app onto his phone and showed him how to use it. Unknown to him, he'd been stuck on the carpooling option, Uber Pool. That's what he used for years. There are all sorts of tales of commuters hopping into their carpool and bam. There's John Boner stuck in a middle seat asking to get dropped off at the Capitol building. However you feel about his politics, I think that's pretty funny. One of my best friends used to drive Uber in a wealthy area of LA. He told me so many stories about drunk celebs and tiktokers in his car. Someone offered him a bag of weed because they felt sorry for their friend throwing up in the back seat. Most people were just normal though. Some highlights. Quentin Tarantino and Trisha Paytas were making out in his backseat when they were secretly dating lol. Mike Tyson is apparently very nice in person and also a giant pothead. Somebody on Gossip Girl and her friend were arguing about chicken nuggets and tried to get him to go through a Wendy's drive through during the lunch rush when there were 10 cars already in line. Addison Rae or one of her friends took their shoes off and left them in the car. Leo DiCaprio took more than 5 minutes to find the car. He seemed out of it and was quietly bobbing his head listening to music on his headphones. Wasn't exactly a chauffeur but I did have the distinguished privilege of working with a multimillionaire one time for a couple days and I was just astounded at how out of touch he was with people. One conversation he was talking about how he hated all the new homes they were building and he liked old castles so he was having a castle in Scotland disassembled and reassembled here in the US piece by piece. On another occasion he asked me why I wasn't in college yet. The job was after high school and I was working as a plumber and gave me an alright when I told him I couldn't afford to go yet and had to save up. Having a Scottish castle moved to the US and reassembled here is literally the plot of Gargoyles, a 90s cartoon on the WB. I'm kinda excited to see where this goes. Not a chauffeur, and I was a participant in this conversation. I used to tutor an oligarch's daughter in Rybilevka, the wealthy suburb outside Moscow. One day she mentioned that she likes to ski. I asked her which kind of skiing she preferred. Downhill is more popular where I'm from. Big cross country is quite popular in Russia, it's even part of some school's curricula. Her answer? My favorite kind of skiing is the type where you jump out of a helicopter. Silly me. I forgot about that kind. I was definitely expecting something much different. Not a chauffeur but worked as a caterer for private jets and the insane folks who owned them. Had a huge order from what I knew to be a smaller jet so I really wondered about it. When one of the owner's handlers was training a new flight crew, he ordered $12k of meals for a flight that didn't exist just so the new flight attendants could practice the fine points of checking in a catering order. I listened outside after the food drop as the handler started explaining what to do to 6 of the most beautiful humans I have ever seen. We provided food for a lesson. The food was wasted. I found it in the dumpster outside one of the hangars the next day. About 25 years ago I had a summer job at a very Tony country club. 6 figure joining fee, 5 figure continuing membership dues, and that got you nothing but the privilege of paying top dollar for rounds, food, etc. I was a porter some of the time, as we had cottages on club grounds for members to stay and make a weekend of it. One of my duties was driving members to and from airports, usually private airports for private jets. One time I'm driving two guys to the airport, and one of them starts complaining. Seems he and his wife are always fighting over who gets the jet every weekend, and where they want to go. Well, the other one replied, my third jet is actually just gathering dust right now, since my son went to college. Wanna take it off my hands? They shook on it right there in the van. Not a chauffeur. 
A small part of my family was Chicago Mafia. Grandpa told me a story of a family wedding in Chicago they went to in the late 60s. They were picked up at the airport by a limo with some high ranking family members. On the way to the hotel they were stopped about 8 times by various police officers. The officer would walk up to the driver's window. The chauffeur would reach into a money bag and pass a bill to the officer. Nothing would be said and they'd take off again. Eventually my grandpa asked if they were being bribed. His cousin, Mafia, laughed and said, No it's Thursday, that's when we pay our boys. So I guess that's how they did it. Looks like a traffic stop and in the open where it's not unexpected. So I'd imagine that chauffeur had seen some things. I'll answer for my grandparents. They owned a limousine business, I believe in the early 2000s, and my grandmother drove Mel Gibson around. She said he was nice and that he had requested to sit in the front passenger's seat due to car sickness. Imagine hiring a limo and sitting in the front. In Australia we tend to sit in the front in taxis so it could have been a bit of that too. Not a driver, but I used to caddy at a fairly exclusive country club in Massachusetts. It's the kind of place where, no matter how rich you are, you can't buy a membership. You're either born into it or you marry a member. As a result, a lot of the members like to show off their influence by inviting guests who would otherwise be unable to play at the club. Someone invited Mitt Romney. We were given a heads up that the governor, he wasn't a senator yet, would be coming and they wanted us to know how to act around him. We were told he wanted to be treated like anyone else but they didn't want us to gawk. So, I guess to make sure us dumb caddies weren't gawking, we were instructed to not look at or acknowledge the governor. Because this is precisely how we would treat other people. I did get to shake his hand and chat a little bit. He was friendly, personable, way nicer than a lot of the members. I still don't like a lot of his politics but he seemed nice enough in person. I used to work in politics, and never heard a bad thing about how Sen Romney acts in his personal life. Seems genuinely courteous and respectful to people. I have deep ideological differences with him, but you can tell an elected's real character in how they treat underlings. I sometimes Uber drove in DC and they would order a ride but instead of getting in the vehicles, they would just put a bunch of paperwork in your car and then you would deliver it to the next government building. Always felt kinda sketchy that government employees would send documents via an Uber driver's lol. I was driving a Zuba and I picked up two businessmen in an industrial park. They were building developers. The man who was clearly the boss spoke to me as if I were a man and I was always the driver who picked him up. Although they were clearly from the Middle East, they chose to speak English. Maybe they thought it was rude not to being in the US, but if that would have been rude I'm not sure what the rest of the conversation was. They spoke about the future of business as if it were all so futile and how everyone will be either very wealthy, like them, or very poor, and how their children really won't be able to get jobs either but also won't need to. I logged more than 4000 rides between 2015 and 2017 and that was one of the weirdest. The other weirdest guy I picked up from a dispensary, he was really good looking, very well dressed, and clearly well to do, but he was in some kind of mental distress. He wanted to visit more dispensaries but had clearly already bought the maximum. I got his hotel information through conversation and went there instead. On the way, he told me, in all seriousness, all about how his father was God, which meant he was Jesus. Didn't you notice how much brighter the sun became when I got in your car he was serious. He also followed Guns N' Roses like they were the Grateful Dead. He thought Axl Rose was the smartest man alive. He didn't really notice when we got to his hotel instead of the dispensary. I did ask him if he had taken any other drugs that day and he insisted he hadn't. That was also one of the weirdest. It sounds like a guy having a severe manic episode. I am late to the party but I can absolutely contribute to this thread. Used to work for a private transportation company. Started my own chauffeur business last year. A couple things right off the top of my head that come to mind. 1. Had a really snobby family from another mountain estate come to our state and the entire ride to their destination was spent talking about how much better their state was. Towards the end of the ride, the mother started cutting her toenails in the company vehicle. No idea how to react to that situation. Basically just had to let it ride. 
2. Probably one of the wealthiest people I've ever met in my life was a gentleman who was a very high ranking member of Scientology. Was also one of Bill Gates close business partners. Never in my life have I been treated like I did not exist until that ride. Barely even got his name before he asked not to speak for the almost 2 hour ride. 3. Just previously I drove an NFL all star and he was one of the coolest people I've ever met which was super refreshing. All I ever heard of celebrities particularly athletes, was that they could be very rude. Guy was just a regular butt homie who gets paid 15 mil a year. Scientology guy sounds sus af. What's the worst case of rich kid syndrome you've seen? Girl in my high school physics class offering her brand new iPhone to be destroyed in an experiment because my dad will just buy me a new one. She had it for like one week. I volunteer for Burning Man which happens to attract some of the worst trustafarians I have ever seen. People who claim to live bohemian lifestyles of art and magic, that also have unending parental support for their magical globetrotting adventure. It's frustrating, because these people live in the most sheltered bubble of all. I can't even begin to describe how infuriating it is to deal with folks who can drop $50,000 on a week at a festival. I was wondering how some of those people afford that crap. Hey guys please help, which car should I get? I want a lot but daddy will only buy me one. This was posted to Facebook by a Tinder match. Yeah I'd rather not go there. You should go there, and make her fall in love with you. Then you get to be a rich snob as well. My friend was Chinese Canadian. She worked as an English tutor for the Chinese uni students. Her role was to teach them functional English, help their pronunciation and work with them on essays etc. What ended up happening was her teaching these students life skills, egg, how to use a washing machine, how to grocery shop etc. She had to call one family because they were sending the 19 year old kid US $25,000 a month for living expenses. This was back when a student apartment was like $600 a month on average. 90s, she explained to the parents that the amount was excessive. The parents chuckled about it but didn't stop. P. Dang. The kid was making more than most of their professors. A kid in my graduating high school class was very wealthy. His parents bought him a Land Rover when he was 16 and he crashed it into a school bus. They bought him another Land Rover and he lost it street racing. Guess what? They bought him a Mercedes. Ha. Huh, that will teach him. Dude would stand in a club and rip up bills of 10 euros yelling this is nothing to me. Okay, how about just giving away beer instead of antagonizing anyone in sight. My broke butt crawling around picking up half tens to tape together lolol. My sweet May freshman year of college would pay me, my roommate and his roommate to his chores for him every couple of weeks. He literally gave me $20 for making his bed. TBH, depending on how gross he was. That sounds like super easy money. My cousin has just graduated from high school last year. His parents are big time real estate agents in our hometown. Like they both probably clear $1 million a year easily. So my cousin goes off to college and gets busted for public drunkenness and resisting arrest his first semester. Gets expelled from school. Starts bumming off his folks for money. His dad just bought him a brand new Ranger over last weekend as a reward for learning from his mistakes and staying positive when the law targeted him. I feel like his dad needs to be audited. Was a in college. One of my residents was a rich freshman from Rhode Island. He lives on an island and takes a ferry into town. Anyways, his first week, he asked if there was fresh water available in the shower. I didn't understand what he meant, but apparently he didn't like showering with city water and didn't realize it was everywhere he went. I was so shocked and didn't know what to say that I suggested he used water bottles to clean him. Yeah, he didn't last long. I work with a girl who said she only drinks new water. She explained new water meant only bottled water because, it's new because they make it fresh just to bottle it. Another colleague explained the water cycle and that bottled water isn't new water at all. She was dumbfounded. Not me, but my scuba instructor told this story. Some rich family paid him a few thousand dollars to fly down and give private scuba lessons to them in the Bahamas. In scuba, you have to demonstrate you can handle all the skills in the pool before they let you in the ocean. During the pool part, they got to the skill of clearing the water out of your mask, 
which is mildly unpleasant but not painful or even hard. They refuse to do it. My instructor said if you can't clear a mask you can't be cleared to dive. They spent a few thousand on private scuba classes and wasted it all because they refused a pretty simple skill. Once when I was at a camp, me and a few other kids were playing a game. Kids from a different part of the camp came over and told us to leave. We replied that we were there first. One of them replied yeah but does your dad have a helicopter? That's when I would have step kicked him in the nuts. I used to work at a wholesale kitchen appliance distributor. It was a multi-million dollar company. The CEO's daughter was my age, 23 at the time, and would often come shoot the crap with us in sales. She had a high-rise condo by herself downtown, worth about $300,000. After I left, I bumped into one of my old co-workers and she came up in our conversation. I asked how she was doing, and my co-worker informed me that daddy bought her another high-rise condo, which was directly across from her current condo, and the only other condo on that floor. Why did she get two high-rise condos? Well, she wanted the floor to herself. I kinda felt sorry for her because she was an only child and didn't have many friends. She'd also never had a boyfriend in her life. She confided this in me when we were talking alone one time, and said all the guys she tries to date are intimidated by her family's wealth. Looking back now, I think she might have been coming on to me. I still regret not asking her out. Maybe she got the other condo for you. For eternity did a pledge event in which we were placed in a limo. Normal friend. Wow, this is awesome. I've never been in a limo before. Rich kid syndrome friend. Haven't you ever been to the airport? I went to a private school for high school. So we had a lot of those crashed one fancy car and daddy bought them a new one kind of stories floating around. But I didn't know any of them personally. Then I went to a private college. Suddenly most of my classmates seemed to be these people. The worst by far was this guy my roommate dated for a while. Had a really nice car but had no idea how to take care of it. When it started to have trouble, he dropped it in front of a friend's house and had his parents buy him a new one. Spilled a drink all over someone's computer and when they got upset, he laughed and told them they could just get a new one. Told several professors that he paid for an A so he dang well better get it. In poetry class. WTF dude. That was the easiest A ever. Didn't understand why my roommate went home for a weekend to help her dad after surgery. He asked her why she didn't have people for that. Threw away his textbooks when he was done with them. I dug through his trash with his roommate and we split the hall even Stevens. And so. So much more. He didn't last long as my roommate's boyfriend nor as anyone's friend. I don't think he ever graduated. Weirdly, he had a twin sister who was very sweet and down to earth. So I have no idea how that happened. Comma threw away his textbooks when he was done with them. I dug through his trash with his roommate and we split the hall even Stevens. If I learned anything from this thread, it is that I should follow rich people around and sell their trash. This kind of pales compared to some of these, but I'll give it a go. When I was a broker's frick bike messenger, I was dating a woman who was heir to a major restaurant fortune. One evening, she wanted to go to a club downtown, and I said I couldn't go because I didn't have any money. She said I should come on anyway so I figured she's footing the bill. When we got to the club and it's time to pay the cover at the door, she pays for herself and starts to walk in. I'm like... Hey, I don't have any money, I can't get in, she comes back out and tells me to just put it on my credit card, but of course I don't have one, the she tells me she'll drive me to an ATM, but of course I don't have a bank account because I'm broke, I'm standing there in the street with her, trying futilely to explain that I literally do not own any money, she could not grasp the concept, I ended up walking home and she went to the club, we did not last long. Went to visit a friend at university, Queen's University, and they were all known for being spoiled brats. We're at his student house with his roommates. I introduce myself and say what's up. His one roommate looks at me, looks down, looks back up at me and asks are those knockoff spares? Of course they were being the broke but college student I was. So I told him yes and he just goes wow, and walks away. Kid never said another word to me the rest of the weekend. Yes. Currently at Queens and this place is surreal. 
I'm a poor PhD student and TBH this is more money than I have ever had here so I don't fit in. I see these entitled kids every day all day. Bonus. I also mark their exams, assignments and may even teach a class in a few years. Jokes on them. I worked at Sunglass Hut in South Florida. One day a family of four came in to buy glasses. Now I am used to people having money and buying stupidly expensive sunglasses. But the dad told the kids, who were probably 6 and 4, to get the glasses they wanted. Both grabbed 4 pairs of sunglasses that cost over $250 each. Then both kids pulled out wads of $100 bills to pay for them. Back in middle school when flip phones razors were in. A friend asked to use my phone to call his parents causes died. I hesitated but then I handed him my Nokia block phone. He looked at it and was like what the heck is that laughed and walked away. What a dong. I read this as he wanted to borrow your phone because his parents died. Was really confused for a sec. Old roommate signed up for classes at the community college. Never. Not once went to class. Obviously failed. His mom got mad and over the phone he explained to her that the reason he failed was his car wasn't good enough 2012 Ford which was fine and needed a new one. So his mom buys him a brand new car. 2016. He signs up for classes the next semester and still ends up never going to class. Oh, holy crap. I posted something earlier about my own experience, but something my sister experienced just popped into my head. On this one, I'll call it rich adult syndrome. My youngest nephew was invited to a birthday party in the first grade. A girl in his class was having a birthday party and invited the entire classroom, about 25 kids. My nephew was super stoked to go to his first big kid party, as he put it, and spent the entire evening the night before picking out his outfit so he could look cool. The morning of the party, however, he was on his knees puking his poor little guts out in front of the toilet, crying about not being able to go to the party. My sister did everything she could to make him feel better, but he was devastated. He was also really upset that his friend wouldn't get the present he picked out for her. So, while my brother-in-law cleaned up and took care of the sick kid, my sister drove to the birthday girl's house to drop off the present and explain my nephew's absence. Of course, the party was at one of the large McMansion neighborhoods filled with BMWs, Mercedes, Land Rovers, and enough gaudy look at me. I have money crap to stun even Donald Trump. When the mom answered the door, let's call her bitchy and face, she seemed polite enough at first. My sister explained that my nephew was sick, throwing up, and could not come, but he wanted his friend to get her birthday present. So, there she was to deliver it and make sure it was received. Bitchy thought that was grand, and then said oh, and I have something for you and your son. She gave my sister an envelope and a small goodie bag for the kiddos. The bag had stickers, gum, some M&Ms, a bouncy ball, all the typical crap little kids loved. It probably cost about $2 per bag for the kiddos. My sister thanked her and left. It wasn't until she got home that she opened the envelope. It contained a card that said we are sorry that you did not feel it appropriate to respect your RSVP'd confirmation. Much time, energy, and money was put into this party. Please pay us back for the money and time that you wasted by not bringing your child to a party he or she was confirmed to attend. It contained a breakdown of food costs, about $25 per kid, according to Mrs. Mick and Face, costs for the entertainment, a clan or bouncy house or some such crap, and $35 per kid, and a $150 inconvenience fee for non-monetary expenditures. This woman was rolling in dough, and she threw one heck of a bash for her kid. If the itemized bill is to be believed, yet, she had the gall to think that a sick kid not being able to attend meant that the parents of the child should be charged over $200 for the inconvenience. I had a friend I met through competitive gaming that I visited once for a tournament. He and all his friends went to a prep school and were now all in university. I stayed at his uni rented house because it was before school season and there was empty rooms. He told me he didn't talk to his family because his father kicked him out and abandoned him. We keep drinking and he keeps explaining and it turns out his father felt like when my friend turned 18 he should leave the home. Old values, understandable. So the dad pays for my friend's rent, his uni tuition, 
and his car. Dude still considers himself abandoned. My mum got me a pair of jeans for my 18th birthday. I couldn't even imagine having all of that provided for me. I saw a girl absolutely fuming because the BMW she got as a high school graduation gift wasn't quite the right color. I got a Chili's dinner and a Graz. I was at a club with a very rich friend of a friend who wanted to show off and impress the Lariates and he poured some super expensive champagne on the floor and was like what's money eeeh. I would have told him he's a freaking idiot and should rethink his life then and there, but I saved that for after he picked up the tab that night. He was overall a very unpleasant guy. I met a kid who didn't understand the concept of washing dishes, and then BSP. Wife went back to college, new city, didn't know anyone, started a movie night thing to meet some people and build a social circle, and then BSP. We provided a home cooked meal. A fun movies that most people hadn't seen, and a place together, went over great and had 6-12 people showing up each week to hang out and talk and eat our food. Generally good people, because she was going back to college, a lot of college kids came, all good, and then BSP. I knew this one guy was from a rich family, his first night there he's bragging to everyone who'll listen about the 30k plus truck his parents just bought him and telling everybody how awesome he is, and then BSP. After everything is done we're collecting dishes in the kitchen and he walks over and following me to the kitchen he walks in and puts his dish and silverware in the trash can. Hey man, what are you doing I'm assuming he brain blanked for a second. No big deal. What? Give me the dishes. Don't throw em out. It's a ceramic plate, not a paper one. Why he asks, obviously confused. I'm going to wash it. Why he repeats. Now I'm confused. So it'll be clean for next time? Oh. Like the dining hall. Oh. Okay. Sure. And then BSP. I find out later he basically lives off takeout. Restaurants. ETC. He's never cooked anything in his life. His family has servants who clean up after meals and. And he just assumed dishes were something you threw out when you were done. College was the first place where he even saw the idea of putting dishes somewhere other than the trash. Or leaving them on the table. Afterward. And then BSP. He wasn't a bad guy honestly, just, I was amazed something so incredibly basic had slipped by him for years. I'm seeing it right now, actually, I have a friend I went to art school with and we both studied photo. We both coincidentally live in a large city, where I have been working and making art in my spare time for about a decade. She's also been here about that long, but has been fortunate enough to have her father completely underwrite her life meaning no need to work. And she even has a full in home darkroom set up in her apartment. Well, dad finally pulled the plug on the free art life. So, now she is likely going to have to leave our city. Her response was to set up a GoFundMe, to the tune of 11 grand, asking her friends to pitch in to help her renew her lease and pay rent, etc. Pretty mind boggling on so many levels. I guess people who have had stuff handed to them their entire life have a very different concept of what's owed to them, and what's okay to ask for. The art life is tough, I know from lived experience, but there's no way in heck I'd hit my friends up for rent money over it. The killer is, she's had a decade of what amounts to a free art grant, and the amount of work she's produced is ridiculously small. I personally create more work in a year, and that's with a full time job. Seeing things like this on GoFundMe pisses me off to no end. I once reported someone my younger brother knew for setting one up to collect money from people for paying for his hospital stay after a car accident. Conveniently forgetting to share with people that it was his second DUI and he was without a license at the time. Two guys in college. 1. Mom. I need new Gucci shoes. They're dirty. 2. Throws current cell phone against wall and destroys it. Can I borrow your phone to call my dad? Dad, I need that new RAZR. Mine broke. Maybe not worst. Back when I was in college, in the US, at the end of every school year, the students who were from other countries, in particular, Japan, China, and India, would throw out barely used clothes, bicycles, and any other items they couldn't bring back with them over summer and didn't bother to keep in storage. These were often students that were going to this US college for 4 years, 
but who were just going home for summer. Many people would go dumpster diving after they left and find designer clothes and tons of other great stuff for free. Can't complain, cause many of us benefited from it, but I can't imagine how rich you must be to throw away those things and not think that anyone else would ever want a barely used designer shirt or sunglasses. During a holiday, my cousins came down to visit from New York. Two of them were younger, I think one was 11, the other 15 at the time, and we knew that their family had a decent amount of money. My grandmother, not having a lot to give and not knowing what these two boys could want, gave them money cards with $20 a piece inside instead of gifts. When they opened them, the younger one laughed loudly and the older one just looked disgusted before looking up at my grandma's smiling face and saying what the frick do you think we can buy with $20? What little c. When I was about 17, I had recently saved up enough money to buy a new smartphone. It took forever since I was a high schooler earning minimum wage, and being told by my parents to use money on certain things. So in total, I had very little say in what my money would be used for. So when I had enough for this smartphone, I was too excited. So, it's been about a year with this phone. I plan on keeping it for a couple more since I prefer to use them until they're completely useless. I'm holding it and standing outside in a parking lot, waiting for my friend inside the store. She comes out, and comes up to me. She is spoiled rotten, mind you. She's hyped up about something. I never found out what. She grabbed my phone, and I thought she was going to make a call since she left her phone at home. I warned her to be careful with it. No, she was not careful. She wasn't making a call at all. She threw my phone in the air and caught it. At this point, I was flipping crap and running over to her to take it back. Back she threw it again, much higher, and tried to catch it. She did not catch it. My phone was completely shattered. I was horrified, and cradling it like she just dropped my newborn child. I kept asking her why she did it. She just laughed and said, I didn't think it was gonna break. I got angry and said that it took forever to save up for it. He replied, just ask your mom for a new one. Ah, you kidding me. I told her not everyone can ask their parents for a couple hundred dollars for a new phone. She simply shrugged and said, it's just three hundred dollars. Not really that much. She doesn't work, obviously. She doesn't know what $300 means to a teenager making minimum wage. She then asked me to tell my mom that I broke it so she wouldn't get in trouble. Needless to say, when I told my mom how it broke, the truth, my friend was pretty pee. In fact, she refused to buy me a new phone when I asked. She wouldn't tell her parents, and she never invited me over again so I could tell her mom. So a few years later, I'm out and about and in town again, and I see my old friend's mom. We were catching up from the last time we saw each other, which was before the phone incident. Then her mom says, it's a shame you two stopped talking because you were upset that you broke your phone. Well, I quickly ended the conversation and went on my merry way. Side note, I have an iPhone now. I don't let anyone near it. Whoa, I don't care who it would have been that did that to my phone and said ask your mum for a new one. I'd go right to their parents make them pay for the dang thing and then give the kid a swift punch in the nose out of spite. What is the worst way you've seen someone mismanage their money? Well, the accountant at the small business I work at does a lot of funny things with money. Has a perfectly good, paid off car, but it was slightly too old to drive for Uber to make extra money, so she got a lease on a brand new car through Uber. After a month she found out she wasn't making enough extra money from Uber to even pay the lease, and her commute was too far to drive the Uber car to work and back, because they limit the miles. After she weaseled out of her Uber lease, she decided she needed a brand new Harley that she had no idea how to drive. This was over a year ago. She has ridden it exactly once around her neighborhood. She will be paying for this motorcycle for another 4 years at least. She took out a second mortgage on her home to fix it up to get ready to sell. She is so happy with the remodel that she is keeping the house. She is a single mother twice over, and is always telling us how some nice man from her church paid for her daughter's school trip or whatever. She is the dumbest person I have ever met and I am always a little freaked out that she is handling our money. I am always a little freaked out that she is handling our money. You should be. Every fraud story I've heard, used to be an auditor, went just like yours. 
Hopefully there are good controls in place so that reviews and approvals are required and the expenditures are accounted for. Divorce. Growing up, we were good friends with a family that had made it big with buying selling airplane parts pre-internet age. The couple went through a nasty divorce that got strung out over a 6 year period. The wife was 100% convinced through her shitbag lawyers that her husband had funneled money into secret accounts. He didn't, and wasn't happy with his initial offer, the mansion, half the multi-millions, and 5000 a month for child support alone. The court proceedings went on for years, and at the end of it all, they both pretty much had nothing due to court fees and lawyer fees. His business failed because of how unstable air travel became after 9-11. If she had just split things and taken that with the mansion and the other payments, she would have gotten 4.2 million from the divorce, not having worked a day in her life. TL. DR. Divorce is a hell of a drug. The wife was 100% convinced through her shitbag lawyers. Shitbag lawyers playing both sides of the game. Husband has funds hidden away. Get huge commission for winning a bigger settlement in the divorce. Husband has no money hidden away. Drag case through courts for years. Racking up billable hours. Win win for them. I have an idiot friend who's getting something like 30% of his wages garnished. Why? Because he forgot to pay his student loan. He's crap at paying bills and it's not because he doesn't make the money for it. He has a decent job. He just literally ignores paper mail and emails reminding him and then eventually demanding him to pay off things like credit card bills and his student loans. If he does bother to read them it literally goes in one ear and out the other, just slides right out of his mind. After a few months he'll remember, log into his account, pay the payment in full with accrued interest and shrug it off like it's normal. Somehow he forgot to pay his student loans for something like a year and it went to collections. I told him he could even just set up automatic payments for that crap and he agrees it's a good idea, and then just never does it. I offered to set it up for him and it's always later. Friend got 150k in life insurance from her mom passing. It was gone in a year. She paid a 20k bail for her boyfriend. At the end of that year, he was also gone. She works at Popeyes now. The idea of bail is that you get it back though. A friend at 37 who have never worked any job that pay above minimum wages inherited tons of money from his father. Despite having absolutely no experience in any of those positions or even how to run manage a business. Suddenly open up a restaurant which was a disaster from day one and closed down not long afterward. Decided to get into photography business. Throw away tons of money on all super fancy equipment he had absolutely no idea what is for or how to use. Never made a penny. Tried to start a DJ business. No bite. Disappeared off face of the earth right afterward. I bet his social media was all about grinding, hustling, and killing it. My friend, whom I love dearly, recently has been driving me pretty insane. Her parents are terrible with their money, and she has been complaining for ages about how inconsiderate and irresponsible they are. How they infuriate her because they buy things they don't actually need with the reasoning of well. It'll make us someone else happy so what's the problem she calls me a month or so ago because thanks to her parents and their irrational spending habits and irresponsibility, she may not be able to finish school. She doesn't know how she'll manage to eat or afford anything she needs, and she can't get a full time job right now either. So she and her boyfriend, who she's breaking up with soon, decide that, instead of saving their very limited money and using it wisely, they would impulsively buy two puppies. I don't know the breed but they'll be huge dogs when they grow up. From a sketchy stranger on Facebook who they don't know and who charged them hundreds of dollars for the pups. Her reasoning for getting them. When she knows she can't afford them, they'll make me happy so it'll help with the stress of not having any money. I'm still enraged honestly. The hypocrisy, irresponsibility, and impulsivity is maddening. Of all the posts in this thread, I find this one the most infuriating. Those poor puppies don't stand a chance. My friend is basically a 37 year old child with a good salary. One month his water bill was $700. He asked me if I thought it was because his sink faucet was dripping. I said it sounded more like a broken pipe. He never found out the issue. He just paid the bill and said oh well. Probably one of those guys that has his mom do everything for him. I know a lot of men that were big time mama's boys that make good money now and if they get a utility bill that's $500 a month, 
they will pay the bill instead of calling to see what the issue is. A guy I worked with was always complaining that he was poor, although I later found out that this was solely due to bad budgeting and impulse spending. He was really good at his job so I suggested that he do some freelance IT security consulting on the side. He did a job for a high-end jeweler which paid him around £2k for 2 days work. He was ecstatic that he finally had enough money to fix all the problems he'd been putting off for ages like the oil leak on his car, a new pair of work shoes and get his boiler fixed. At the end of the job, he was leaving the retailers with cash in hand when he spotted a high-end watch in a display case which was £2,000 down from £3,500 or so. Unable to pass up such a bargain he handed the £2k back and walked out with the watch instead. Two days later he was complaining because his fridge was empty. My response was at least you can use the watch to time how long it takes you to starve. LOL great line at the end there. How could he have all these plans to use the 2k to better his comfort in life and then suddenly see a nice watch and go all ooh shiny. Grew up fairly wealthy. Went to a private school with lots of other wealthy kids. Knew one girl who had two wealthy parents pass away when she was young. She lived with an uncle. She was messed up as a kid. Really wild. Always the first to try everything. In her own way incredibly sweet. Always protected the less popular kids. Anyways. She hits 21. Gets a huge trust fund. Her uncle puts up a fight for the money because he knows she is going to go nuts with it. It wasn't for the cash. He had much more than her. Ultimately he loses and she gets everything. It's the beginning of the end for her. She blows through massive wealth in two years doing untold amounts of C. Binge drinking. Trips to crazy places. Constantly surrounded by people using her for party money. We're talking millions of dollars here. Not a cent invested anywhere. Anyways. Two years later she's back with the uncle. Not a penny to her name. He loves her so of course takes her in. Everyone that hung on to her for the past two years is gone. Everyone laughs at her behind her back. A few overdoses and drug use left her a little slow. She tries school but it doesn't work. Her uncle gave her a job but it's a token thing. At least she's lucky enough that she had someone to look after her in the end. She failed the Harry Potter test. My friend started up a gaming store. Like for tabletop games. Magic the Gathering. DND. Gaming figurines. ETC. He mistakenly thought because he was so interested in the material it would be easy for him to jump into. He has no business acumen. And never owned a business in the past. He never had a lot of money. Always rented. Always behind on bills. Had child support kids to pay for. ETC. Although he was really good at penny pinching and saving money. That was only half the equation. He ended borrowing a bunch of money from his new wife. He set his store location up in a small town that's rather out of the way, bad location. He claimed the store was only temporary and was supposed to be a storage site so he could ship items sold off the internet. Thus, he never got much traffic and therefore few sales. However, it was a source of contention between him and his wife. He had confided in me his store was ultimately a reason to get out of the house and away from the family, not a really good reason to throw money into a business. He and his wife ended up divorcing. He decided to quit the store. He ended up with a ton of merchandise packing his meager apartment that he had been trying to sell. Worst of all, he apparently didn't keep his books. He is currently somewhere around 50k dollars in tax debt to the state and increasing with fines. I find this astounding because there is no way he had enough revenue to justify that much in taxes in the period he owned and operated the store. I wonder if something else was afoot? A lot of the time, if you don't file taxes, then the state will assess them for you. This is almost always a much higher amount than is actually owed once you get the proper paperwork filed. But he needs to get a decent accountant to go over his books and figure out what he needs to file in order to get caught up. My sil had a kiosk at the mall that didn't make that much money. She doesn't have another job except Uber sometimes. She has two kids and always takes them to eat out and does buy stuff that costs beyond her means. She lives with my mill and pays next to nothing for rent. So there's really no excuse. She refuses to even slightly thrift on her kids clothes and constantly buys them stuff like Lacoste and Ralph Lauren because image is apparently everything. Her oldest just started kindergarten this year. He plays soccer, too, so she splurged on all the high-end equipment, 
and he's not really even that into the sport. Anyway, his teacher said that in her 25 years of teaching, this was the first time she was ever instructed by a parent to make sure their kid changed his shoes before pay. I just got the news this morning that she lost the kiosk yesterday. Two men are fines for showing up late to open and bringing her youngest to work with her, so they shut her down. Every once in a while my stepdad will calculate how much money he could save by quitting drinking, then decides to quit and start spending like he has that money. He doesn't actually quit. Pay their current vehicle off with savings, then immediately trade in that car, and get a car worth a lot more, only to be back in deeper debt, with less in their savings. This person made a lot of other dumbass choices but that's a different story. If I pay it off now, I can trade it in for something bigger happens so often. It's absolutely the worst idea. You currently have a vehicle you don't owe on, that if you just paid it off likely has 36-70k miles, and should last you another 100k miles easy. Bubba, that one hooks up to my phone though. I gave my brother a step by step plan to cover his rent, keep his job, fill up his car, and pay me back within a one week period. He was tight on money. I found him at Foot Locker with a large bag two hours later. That must have hurt. I knew a guy that bought a Transim, fully loaded, and had a $700 payment in 1985. That's like $1650 today. He ended up bankrupt. Another guy I know told me he was going to declare bankruptcy over a $4000 debt about 20 years ago. We were riding in his late model truck. I said, why don't you sell the truck, settle the debt and save up for a new truck. He got furious and yelled at me for saying that. He ended up bankrupt, and still lost the truck. I have a friend who is 40 years old, single, lives by himself and will buy weed as a priority over some of his bills. Every 2-3 months I'll get a call asking for a bailout. He is also on social security and lives in a subsidized apartment, pays $120 for rent. Very very frustrating to get those calls for help. I went to community college my first year. I knew this guy that was from a super low income family and he received massive amounts of student loans. He blew it all on a used car, wheels and a sound system. I tried to tell him it was a loan and not a grant. He disagreed. Lost touch with him a year or two later but he has to be underwater in debt. It's one thing to pick up a used car for transportation using student loans, but a sound system in it, jeez. College friend graduated with over $100k in private student loans. The bank offered a $5k credit towards the loans as a graduation gift, or $1500 in cash. They took the $1500 and used it as a down payment on a new car. I have a colleague in her mid 50s who is divorced with no kids. She is the sole means of her own financial support. That is, no parents or siblings to fall back on. She lives alone in an apartment. She recently took out her second debt consolidation loan. As soon as she gets those credit cards maxed out, she takes out a loan, pays the cards off and runs them up again. I'd feel sorry for her if the charges were for general living expenses but they're not, therefore highlights in her hair, manicures, trips to the Caribbean with boyfriend du jour, those cute sandals that she'll wear twice before replacing them with cuter sandals, high end everything, makeup, perfumes, clothing, once in a while, she will lament about her $40,000 loans and the fact that she is literally two paychecks from being homeless and I will gently point out that less trips to the salons and the islands might put her in a better financial position. I work hard and I deserve nice things. I deserve vacations. I deserve to feel good and look good. Don't tell me how to spend my money. This, coming from a woman who has to pay for her lunch with a credit card the day before payday because she's overdrawn on her checking account. I've seen her do this, and she explained why she was doing it. She refuses to believe that she's the cause of her own financial difficulties. I worked with someone like this too. She was pushing 60 and getting close to retirement age and still didn't own her own home, and was renting, instead of saving her not inconsiderable salary for the last few years towards a home. She chose to get a Mercedes convertible on the basis that I'll never be able to own something like this again. I know someone that will refuse to work a regular job, lives off the women in his life, doesn't have two nickels to rub together at 52 years old, 
and complains constantly about how everything is rigged to keep him from succeeding. I see you know a slightly older version of my brother-in-law. One of my old friends was living paycheck to paycheck, less than that some months. She was eating food from work for breakfast, which was one of those ice cream places. When I was asking her about her finances to see where she could cut back she mentioned that she smoked recreational weed every day, several times a day, but she said, it's only a hobby that I could stop at any time. However, she refused to stop when I told her it was a possible avenue to cut back on if she wanted to comfortably make her bills. It kind of got tiresome to hear about how she had no money for food constantly. Weed isn't addictive. I just like getting high too much to stop. Okay. My friend had saved up around 8k and was planning to use it to down a new car. Instead, his parents forced him to use that money to buy his little brother a used car. Rather than buying something cheap and reliable like a Camry, the dumbass little brother goes full JDM and buys a crappy overpriced Nissan Silvia. The car still needed work and the idiot didn't even know how to work on cars. When I found out what happened, I was freaking livid. I know how hard he had worked to save that money. What's worse is that the younger crashed the car a few months later and it just sat in front of their house for almost a year before they sold it off for dimes. Not the worst, but I had a strong lesson about money management. I was 11 or something. Hitman Blood Money just came out. I was hyped. I loved that series. So I've started to save money right away. I was saving by walking home instead of taking a bus. I was saving by not eating candy or drinking soda, etc. I was really close. But one day as I was walking home I saw cousin. He was holding a RC car. Brand new. I asked about it and he said he won it with luck. He told me there is a game in the market near us. I was amazed. So you can pay one buck and spin the wheel? I wanted to try that game. And I. Wanted. Two, win. I said to myself, okay Captain Cola, just two three games. I went there and spin the wheel, and then I spin it again, and again. I lost, but I still had a lot of money, right? When I realized I blow most of my Hitman money, I was determined more than sad. I wasn't going to afford Hitman, but I still had a chance for that car. So I spin, again. Reality set in when I was sitting on a bank with a bag full of crappy candy and plastic vampire teeth. I lost everything I made in a month in one hour. I learned a hard lesson. Early. So I'm really grateful. But I still keep my saved money somewhere I can't reach easily. Just in case. Maybe one of the cheapest ways to learn that lesson. There was this guy from a hillbilly town who won the lotto. 1 million Canadian dollar. The guy was definitely not well off before. He was being interviewed by a reporter asking him what he was going to do with the money. He said he had spent already half of it buying pickup trucks for his cousins, his family, his uncles and friends and also bought three snowmobiles and five ATVs. Oh well. Hopefully he's happy. My ex-husband Sil's ex-husband's new wife's parents, say that three times fast, died in a motorcycle accident that ended up with the couple getting around $500,000. My ex Sil immediately latched onto her ex-husband along with her 7 kids, 4 of which he believes are his. They bought a new house and my ex Sil moved into their old house. They also bought 5 or 7 new cars for various people and took ex Sil's 7 kids plus their own to Disney World twice. I believe they both quit their jobs. 2. In less than a year, they had spent all the money and were back all trying to live in the original old house that I believe they lost due to foreclosure shortly thereafter. Not me, but I was once talking to an co who told me about the time one of his younger subordinates burned through $5,000 at a strip club with their credit card. The subordinate apparently got their money back by telling their bank it wasn't them when they received their bill. Then co then had to educate him about what financial fraud was. He basically committed theft of services, because in fraud disputes, the business ends up eating the bill. What a shithead. I like to gamble. I wouldn't say I'm an addict, but it sure is fun for me. Any seasoned gambler will tell you, even an addict, don't put down more than you can afford to lose. I like to play a carnival game called Mississippi Stud because it's slow, relaxing, and if you have patience, almost always lucrative. This is a game where you may have to fold 20 hands, but in one hand triple the initial money you put down. 
that is when you should walk away. But this is where casinos make money, because almost nobody does. I was at a table and this guy hits on 4 jacks. At this table, that's 41 odds, and he totaled $4000 in his win. So he gets up from the table and I am happy for him. He is walking away with a nice chunk of change. Eventually I get up, and head over to the roulette wheel to end my stay. Because even though roulette is pure luck, it offers the best exhilaration for me. Few feelings in this world match the feeling of when you hit your number. After a few spins the guy who won the $4000 walks over and plops the entire stack of cash on the table. He puts all his money on red. It landed on black. Guy I knew at uni spent his entire student loan allowance for the semester in two weeks. So he got a payday loan out to fund a night out. Like £100 at an extortionate payback rate. Ended up owing £8,000 in a few months. Got a credit card out to pay that off. Maxed out his credit card in maybe 6 months. He didn't work at uni. His family was on the darker side of poor. He was the kid that was going to make something of himself. So he got the absolute maximum in loans and bursaries. And every time he received the money for them he'd spend it in a matter of days on VIP in clubs and bottle service etc. Not even clothes or gadgets or whatever. I didn't even go to uni in a particularly expensive city. Ironically he was studying something like economics or business. Either way, he dropped out at the end of first year and now works as a car salesman earning a fair amount but living in a tiny studio flat and complaining that one of those furniture rental places won't let him rent out something like a 60 inches TV and PS4 because his credit is so bad. We all tried to warn him but we were called stupid because it was free money. Bet you he spends his free time posting on reddit about how banks are evil for expecting him to pay back school loans. I am a restaurant grams. I watch most of my servers spend at least 50% of their money on booze and or food. Every single day, they bring food in from another restaurant before their shift, drink after the shift at a club or bar and then go out and get more food after they have been drinking. I have seen on slow nights where they paid to work that day due to spending their money on booze because they were sad they didn't make very much. My stupid drunk self spent all my rent money on a brand new HD TV. Luckily sober me got a full refund but I was a week late on rent. Dang that's hard. Waking up and seeing a bad mofo of a TV sitting in my house would be extremely hard to return, even knowing it could put me late for rent, once it's in the house and you're using it. My mother is single, 50 years old, a manager at her store and pulls in about 3500 a month if not more. She rents a room from a friend, $200 a month, and friend confirms that she hardly ever pays her, has no car payment, she takes no vacations and never shops, she claims to be broke 100% of the time, I suspect she is addicted to prescription pain pills. Redditors who came into great wealth and did not lose it in a few years, how did you make the money last? Not me, alas, but I remember reading an AMA a while back from a redditor who won the lottery. I think the jackpot was $30 million, and he got maybe $17 million. He was only in his early 20s, too. He was basically a checklist for how to behave if you win the lottery. He paid off all his debts, had some fun spending some of it, then got a financial advisor who gives him an allowance of something like $90,000 a year. The rest of the money is invested. Anytime he's in danger of exceeding his allowance, his advisor calls and gives him crap. Comma his advisor calls and gives him crap. Well, Mayo I should get an advisor too. Simple living plus investing in real estate and stocks. Inherited about 400k back in 2011. Paid off student loans. Spent 17k on a reliable Honda Civic. Bought a 100k 2 bedroom condo. Went on one really nice vacation then put the rest into stocks and retirement accounts. I live in the modest midwest and I'm a naturally frugal person. But I can't tell you how cheap it is to live when you don't have a mortgage and car payment. With those first two steps down I can put about half my salary into savings and I am well on my way towards financial freedom. I can't tell you how cheap it is to live when you don't have a mortgage and car payment. This is so true. My parents lived frugally and paid off their house very quickly. My dad was without steady employment for about 5 years but since they didn't have a mortgage or car payments they were able to survive on very little. 
I inherited a significant amount of money when my uncle died a few years ago. It was a complete surprise, and I felt very uncomfortable about accepting so much money when I really hadn't done anything to earn it. I immediately dumped all of it into a retirement account and index funds, and honestly I don't even think about it. Dude, me too. Get yourself a fiduciary. If you're younger than 35-40, invest in moderate high risk. Lower the risk over time until retirement. Pull out a bit for a safety net, but keep your job, which I'm sure you're doing. Maximize your 401k and Roth IRA. I knew about an investment account my dad set up for me when I turned 18. Every quarter we would go over the investments. It started at $150k when I first learned about it. When I graduated it was $200k and that's after paying for school. I realized what it could be in another 10 years and decided to never touch it. My now wife and I live way below our means and we are extremely happy. We put $20k in the account each year, even after maxing 401k. My dad made a point to me by creating an excel spreadsheet. He showed me if I saved $10k how much it would become when I turned 60, then did it with $15k, $25k act. It's amazing what $1 today will be in 30 years if you leave it in investments. We did take out money to pay for a wedding, $10k, and a down payment on a house, $25k from investments but $35k from us personally saving for 1.5 years. You should still be happy with your life. It wouldn't be worth living miserably for 30 years just to retire early. My father passed away when I was 18. I'm about to turn 26, and left me a large inheritance set up in a trust fund. The majority of the funds are diversified in low risk investments and a small percentage is in high risk investments with investors at JP Morgan. I receive a set monthly distribution for the majority of my expenses and the trust will cover certain more expensive living costs. I receive a very good amount every month but my trust generates more money each year than what I'm given in my monthly distributions, so my yearly expenses don't really decrease the value of my trust. When I turn 30 I'm granted access to 1 stroke 3 RD of my inheritance, at 35, 2 stroke 3 RDs, and at 40 I'm given access to the remaining inheritance. I most likely will keep the money in investments when I turn 30 but will pull some out as needed to start a business. I realize I'm very fortunate and am thankful every day that my father worked his butt off to give me what he did. I'm also lucky that my father was smart enough to set the trust up like he did because I surely would have blown through a large amount of the trust when I was younger. I'd still give it all back in a heartbeat if it meant getting my dad back though. Frick cancer. I won a sizable lottery jackpot with a friend. My share was mid single digits in the millions. I quit working and budgeted $100k yearly salary. I pay myself $25k every 3 months, for the next 40 years, as well as bought a new house and a vacation house. With no mortgage and just naturally not being overly spendy, that salary is plenty for me and my kid. My great grandfather was a wealthy man with a lot of cash and estate. Thought that the inheritance would be squandered by his 11 kids. Only 9 were alive at the time of his death. He set up a trust with very complex language that would pay out some amount of money every year and every milestone. That is, when someone got married or had a child, or a grandkid turned 18. ETC. Much of the land and property is still held by various parts of our family. Even 3 generations down I got about $6k cash when I turned 18. My dad still gets a lump sum every year. It's not much, but although I've never seen him, we only have one painting of him and his wife, we remember him. The painting part of this post made the longevity of his money really hit you. Not photo, a painting. My dad and I set up investments for my brothers and my inheritance. He doesn't even know how much we have coming available to us right now. It's not stupidly huge, not like. 40-50 mil, but it's definitely sizable. We both live off of our salaries, I make around 60, and he's around 75 slash it, and live modestly. My goal is to retire early, not spend it now. Could I drive around in a Porsche and buy a house? Yup, but I'd rather retire 20 years early. We're both big gamers, so the only really nice thing we both have is a TV, and he has a gaming rig. 
It's funny I started measuring expensive purchases in time till retirement and it's really changed the way I look at things. Like I could buy a Porsche or retire two years sooner. Retirement wins out every time. I inherited over $2 million at 20. At that point my last parent had passed. I paid off my college tuition and used some it for groceries bills until I found employment post grad. The only serious purchase I made was a new car. I keep a salary's worth of cash liquid but the rest is invested. I make enough money now so I can pay all my necessities. Rent, bills, gas, food and such. Making it last isn't hard. I don't find a desire to spend it on frivolous things and I don't really tell anyone about it. I plan on putting it in a trust getting a prenup when I get married. Also, my parents were very frugal so I think that has been instilled in me from a young age. I also think it would be so disrespectful to my parents if I squandered all the money they worked hard for away. If I lost all of it I wouldn't have a backup plan. I have very little family to go to for support. With all that I still max out my personal IRA every year and contribute to my 401k. As I get older I will probably dip into it for a deposit on a house, another car, repairs, etc. Even though I have assets, my money is still subject to the ups and downs of the market and requires a crap ton of paperwork and taxes. I do plan on trying to retire early so I have as much time as possible to be with my loved ones and enjoy my remaining time on this planet. I would give it all up to have my mom back though. Nothing can replace the love, comfort and reassurance I received from her. Your life is a wonderful tribute to her. Got 3 million dollars saved from a business I started and sold. Sold everything. Moved to Central America for 6 months and lived out of a backpack. Learned to shed materialism and live simply. Moved back to USA. Way out in the country. And now live a quiet homesteading life while allowing myself and the wife to spend 60k per year total including nice vacations and farm equipment. There is the old joke of a farmer winning the lottery. When asked what he would do with it, he said keep farming until the money is gone. Inherited 3 million dollars. Paid off wife's student loans. Put the rest in aggressive growth funds. Do a withdrawal of about $10.20k per year for vacations or home improvements. Otherwise, continue to live below our household income and save aggressively. Goal is to retire at age 50 and pay for the kids' educations. A few years ago I found $20 in my pocket. Decided to fold it and put it in a spot in my wallet I rarely went into. It lasted quite some time before I remembered it was there and spent it immediately. If only I had hid it better. This is a great idea. By folding, you doubled it, and even after you take it out you will find it increases. Throw away account for obvious reasons. I sold a company for a few million in profit, invested all of it and only draw a little each year. The most important thing I did was make sure no one, friends or family, knew I had the money. A lot of them know I sold the company but I downplayed it a lot and continue to work so they think I made almost nothing. Stops me from having to worry about people asking for money or expecting me to pay for things because I'm rich. This is really the best advice here. Once you are the rich guy the amount of pressure to pick up dinner, loan money, etc. will be off the charts. Slightly unrelated. I once had nothing and found a double headed coin that looked like a penny. I challenged people to gamble their pennies and at one point I was up over a dollar but my scam fell through when someone picked heads and I lost everything. I was in a bad accident when I was younger and the insurance money was invested by my parents on my behalf. I didn't find out about it until right before I turned 18. It is in an actively managed portfolio that is well distributed. My wife's father passed away when she was in high school. He left her a trust that pays out every 10 years. We bought our first house with it, a small fixer upper. We have saved aggressively since then and opened many other accounts to further diversify. We also bought a small farm that is already paying well just from the rent payments. Our plan is to retire early to a small farm and live a lazy life and be able to do what we want when we want to. I just remembered that being moderately comfortable for a long time is much better than life being crazy super awesome for a short time. I'll never understand those people who are like my 70k income isn't easy to live on as they continue to buy things left and right. Freaking slow down and enjoy it a bit. 
My grandma gave me 550 pounds a few days ago. It's down to 500 pounds because I bought the new Assassin's Creed. But other than that I've been totally responsible. Maybe think about it from this perspective. You spend 9-10% of all your money a few days after receiving it. Got a windfall of about $2 mm in stock from a startup. Does that count as great wealth these days? I certainly think so, but my bar might be low. This was around 2009. I was a single guy. I stopped working. Put 30% into an S&P ETF. Put the other 60% into 5 or 6 large cap companies I believed in. Held on, for the most part, through ups and downs, and only withdrew about 5% per year, which I've lived off since then. I did not increase my lifestyle much. I still have the same car I had before the windfall, a 2004 Toyota. I spend more on travel and food, but overall I live a pretty basic middle class life. Except I have time to do whatever I want. And that's the greatest luxury of all. I write and record music. I learn about technology and fool around with it. I travel and get involved in volunteer projects. I watch movies with friends. It's a good life. I've enjoyed the past 8 years thoroughly and now I have about $3 mm. Money makes money. And having money saves you money. Life is not fair. I worked hard for what I got. But I know a lot of people that work just as hard and didn't get a windfall. I also pay only 15% taxes. It's ridiculous. At some point I helped my parents out by paying off their house. That money will come back to me when they pass on. So it doesn't change my long term financial picture much. I got married and have a kid now. So I got a bigger house. But kept it within budget. I currently do work at a small non-profit but it's more for the fun of being part of a project than for the money. This is my favorite response. Life is for living and enjoying. Doing only the things you want to do. Inherited 500,000 from my dad. I honestly just act like I don't have it. It's a safety net I won't use until retirement. Helps that I have a decent job and a paid off house. Also, I'm famously cheap according to my friends. I have money but don't like to spend it. Quite the opposite, my sister-in-law got 260k from a trust fund and blew every penny. At 18 she got 60k and blew it in less than a year. Moved out the day she turned 18. Dropped out of high school. Got a new car. Paid her boyfriend's child support. Bought $130 leggings, etc. Then when she turned 21 she got 200k. She did the same thing as the first time. I think she owned 3 vehicles at one point. Now at the age of 28 she finally got her ged, makes around 25k a year, and criticizes her sister and I for buying a car we can't afford with a large down payment. I'm glad the people who have posted so far made good use of their money. Good on all of you. Obligatory. Not me but a friend. Diversified investments. Bought a home first. One that was within his means and didn't break the bank. A solid base of low risk blue chip investments and some money put aside for more speculative investments, flyer stocks, businesses, etc. One of those paid out so he's rolling, doing great. Basically just treat it as a retirement fund and don't blow it all on cars, houses, and strippers. Find a good financial advisor and keep the future in mind. Blow it all on cars, is the only part my mind read. I sold my startup for mid 9 figures. My share was worth low 8 figures at the time of sale. I knew I'd want to go at least a little crazy. So I set aside a small portion for that. The flashy car, expensive clothes, etc. The largest portion, roughly 60%, I put into a trust to safeguard it. The second largest portion went into a holdings company that would purchase and manage real estate for me and my family as well as starting my next venture. The next venture failed, but I didn't lose too much. The following venture was very successful and was sold for 9 low figures. No only has my money lasted, it has almost tripled in size by making smart investments and working hard since I sold the company that gave me the windfall. The key is to live well, but don't go crazy. I try to not spend more than 1.22% of my next worth per year. I came into a little over $10 million recently and it seems like it will be extremely easy to make it last. I bought a new Cayman S and a house. 
The rest of the money is invested in a diverse portfolio of equities that bankers at JP Morgan manage for me. When I hear editors saying they would put the money in safe investments like government bond savings accounts that seems insane to me. With this amount of money you can take on a ton of risk and still be very safe. It's me. A ton of risk. I got 300k from my dad's estate. Guess I profited off others misfortune. The economy had crashed and I bought some houses that the price had dropped 100,000 from their all time high. I rent them out now. Having financially responsible parents teaching you how to make money last. It's one thing to give people money. It's another to teach them how to use it. I married my loser boyfriend who I supported for the first couple of years we were together. My family wasn't fond of me falling for a musician but he learned to code and proceeded to kick butt in his area of expertise. Retiring at 40 was an option but we both enjoy our careers and we raise our kids like we're lower middle class so they don't blow the wealth we'll pass down. I'd bet their kids will be the ones to lose it, as is typical came into about 30k from a life insurance policy, paid off a rental property and used the rest to start spec home construction. I have now turned 20k into another 20k in just about 7 months and plan to continue and expand until I can quit my day job. Making the money last is easier for me when it belongs to the business and is immediately reinvested so it doesn't sit in the account long. The first best way to treat that new influx of money into your life is to immediately treat it like it's not your own. You find a fiduciary you trust now, far before you ever have that amount of money. When you do get that inheritance, a good first step is to treat it as if you didn't have it. Continue following your own fiduciary plan based on your income and how old you are. In other words, 1. Use your inheritance to build capital and investments now. Investments at first tend to being moderately risky when you are younger and reduce the risk over time for when you get to retirement age. It's a pretty good idea to max out your 401k and IRA with your income, and use the minimum required distribution to refund yourself for the income you've put into your 401k and IRA. So too, use the minimum required distribution to refund yourself from maxing out your 401k and IRA investments from your own income. Finally, having an economic safety net is a great way to keep yourself stable if you find yourself out of a job. Start figuring out your monthly spending habits, then create a 2-4 month job loss plan, which is how much money you would need to survive with your bills, food, and other minor expenses, until you get to new job. So 3. Once you've maxed out your 401k and IRA for the year, take out a certain amount from your inheritance and start your emergency savings plan. Most important thing is to always have a job. If you're using your inheritance to fund a fun lifestyle, you will build a bad habit that will continue on until after you don't have the money anymore. Use the stability that the inheritance gives you to find better and better paying jobs, in an area that you like, and use it to network with other people who make smart economic decisions. Also find a few people in the middle of the road, who are as willing to have fun with their money as they are to have a foundational economic plan. 4. You won't have good habits at first. So start hanging around those who do have good habits but also have a human soul. Do not use your inheritance to fund wacky schemes or ideas yourself. Especially not if you haven't spoken to several people who know what they are doing when it comes to invention, new business owning, or other usually risky ideas. Let the risk be handled by your fiduciary, and stabilize your life. If you care about your family, now is a really good time to realize that their expenses become your expenses. If it's reasonable to do so, help them pay down high interest credit cards, loans, and health expenses. You should be paying down your own credit card, high interest loans, and health expenses with your own income, because it builds a good habit of budgeting and saving regardless of how much money you have come into. I won a small lottery and still haven't spent the funds. Still sitting at my desk. How did I do it? Self-control. Prioritize my needs. The $140 cash is still sitting in my bank account. Inherited 500k at the tail end 2014 when I was young. Stupid and drinking too much. I opened a brokerage account and went heavily short in oil futures. Made a bundle of money. Got sober and now I just live off dividends. Inherited 2.5m in a combination of capital and liquid assets. 
The liquid stuff I used to pay off bills and loans and the capital I hired someone to liquidate it. I lived like a king for 3 months and after that it went all to a consistent growth portfolio. I have a financial advisor manager who I pay to prevent any stupidity from happening. I feel like people who come into great wealth think they can manage it themselves but have not proven they can. Just be aware of your own personality and limitations and lead with the brain not the heart. I got some crazy experiences and now I just work a regular person job and love my life. It's a blessing to know that one does not have to worry about certain things like retirement so it allowed me to find a career I truly love and make a decent living. I only touch money from liquidated asset sales for fun and excitement but never the whole thing. So I don't feel I'm cheating myself. When I'm ready to buy a home. Soon. I know which accounts I can use specifically for that reason. Have kids, education, etc. It's all just reasonable planning. And taking the control away from impulses. Don't live off the principal. Live off the interest. First thing I did was go find a financial planner, not somebody at the bank, like a legit one. Next thing is we spent some time going over my investment goals, which I needed to have considered beforehand, and what a realistic risk return profile was. Then he invested my money and I waited a couple years. Now I have a nice monthly income. Make low risk investments and simply pretend you don't have that money. Don't completely change your lifestyle to reflect a one time inheritance as if it is a consistent increase in income. Well for my wife and I, we both come from fairly well off backgrounds. Our parents were both immigrants to our country and did well for themselves despite starting with nothing. Our families mainly keep their money in real estate, bank stocks and index funds. It's a really boring answer but when it comes to these things complex investments are probably detrimental in the long run. If you live within your means, you only need to do slightly better than inflation which is really easy when you have a decent sum to start with. Although most of the wealth is still with our parents, I believe my wife and I both could already retire and live very modestly in our mid 30s if we don't decide to have kids. We definitely do not need to worry about saving for retirement. We both still work because she likes her job. I mainly do it because everyone would think less of me if I decided to quit my stable well earning job and be a bum. I am wondering about how I may be able to secretly quit my job and pretend to be working while doing something dumb like making soap on SD or something. I'll be found out super quickly when I suddenly can't qualify for those credit card travel mile offers my folks insist I join once every 6 months. What was the highest waste of money that you don't regret? A quick 7 day trip to Maui in February a couple years ago with one of my teenage daughters, who happened to be free the same week I had off. Work was grinding me down and I needed a break. My wife and the rest of the family couldn't go, they were working or in school. The tickets were expensive, $850 each for bare bones economy narrow rock hard seats. It was a 12 hour flight that was packed to the brim. I was getting bed sores by the time we arrived. We rented snorkeling gear and a car, and spent every day from dawn to dusk snorkeling. Sitting on the beaches and hiking in the mountains, we did the Hana Road, the Seven Sacred Pools and the Halikula Volcano National Park at sunset, and took tons of photos. We ate Spam Musubi for breakfast, Poke and Soman noodles for lunch and Loco Moco for supper. Slept like babies with the windows open wide in the cool nighttime breezes. The best way to blow $5,000 ever. So much what I needed at that point in my life. And a trip your daughter will always cherish. Sounds amazing. OP. My little robot. Yes. I spent $600 on a cat shitter. Bid my house never smells. I don't have to scoop litter. And I only have to empty the drawer once a week. Definitely worth it to me. We just got one this year. I have 4 cats. 1 leg and a bad back. So bending over to scoop is not comfortable. I love that litter box. I spent too much money on a big treadmill for a very small apartment, but I've ran 15-25 kilometers on it every week for the past several years and it's been incredibly helpful both physically and mentally. Your downstairs neighbor's mental health is swiftly deteriorating. Artwork. Can I always afford it? No, but my walls are full of original, 90% local art. They make me happy to look at, I'm sure I made the artist happy too. 
My husband and I just bought our first piece of art from a local exhibition this weekend. It was completely spur of the moment, and very expensive. Also, since we can't travel for our anniversary next month, we are considering it an anniversary gift to ourselves. Can't wait to pick it up at the end of the month. Just shy of $20,000 to go to Antarctica traveling solo, small cruise ship, more than I've spent on every other vacation I've taken combined, was one of the best trips of my life. It also gave me enough space and clarity to realize how toxic my ex was to me so that I could find the strength to leave not long after I got back. I'll always want to go back to Antarctica. The inner peace I found there changed my life. GE Opal Nugget Ice Maker. Dang thing cost more than my car payment but, man oh man. I love nugget ice and I use it the heck out of it every day. Spending hundreds of euros on broken musical instruments because they were pretty. I have since bought spare parts and started repairing them. I found my destiny. My couch. I moved out of my mom's house last year, 2019 so no covid, and I always wanted a good couch. I tested so much, I went to so many furniture stores, looked at so many different models, and then choose mine. It's actually from Ikea. Three seats and long enough to let someone sleep on it, in a grey but I saw they were also having a black cover so I am thinking about getting that one. Extremely comfortable. I wanted a couch where you could chill out and love how fluffy it is without losing the ability to sit on it. In some couches you are not able to lean on the back and still have a straight back. You can sit on the backboard in the armrests. They are flat so you can also put a cup of tea on them. It's also not too low so you don't feel like sitting on the ground. Which I do strangely often compared to my love for this couch. But you can let yourself fall onto that dang thing. It also looks easy and simple. So I don't want the suggestion of someone who tried a lot of couches and happens to be me then buy the Vimal couch from Ikea. I've been a fat guy all my life. Like, really fat. Dressing comfortably was always my preference because being stylish just isn't an option at my size. And this was always a source of anxiety at any social event that required dressing up. When I realized I had 4 weddings of close friends all coming up within the year, I decided to bite the bullet and get some decent formal clothes. I spent $800 on a suit jacket, $250 on 2 pairs of dress pants. A little over $300 for 3 shirts and 3 silk ties that were between $70 and $100 each. I stood for all my measurements and had everything tailored to my exact specifications. Did a fitting and had a second round of alterations on the pants so they actually looked decent. Even though I wore them under my gut. People were floored when I showed up to the first wedding. I received so many compliments and actual double takes. Being introduced to new people felt completely different. I felt impressive. Some of those weddings were the best times of my life and it was due, in no small part, to how those clothes looked and made me feel. Some of those friends have big pictures from their weddings hanging on their walls, and I don't cringe in embarrassment when I see myself in them. Those clothes cost more than I had have ever spent on clothing in any 10 year period, and they were worth every penny. Being a big guy myself I've thought about doing this, but I've always been too cheap. Now I want to do it. Thank you for sharing. I spent $3000 for my wife to meet the Backstreet Boys and get front row seats. It is the best thing that has ever happened to her and the smile on her face after the show and look of pure bliss in someone who suffers often from anxiety was worth every cent. I didn't spend quite that much, but I gave my wife a similar experience with 98 last year. Front row seats, meet and greet backstage, full VIP access at a club post show. The look on her face is still really vivid in my mind. Due to poor insulation and distance from the water heater, my shower is never properly warm in winter. I just bought a single endpoint tankless water heater for just my shower. Best 150 bucks I ever spent. Could I really afford it? Number. Did I need it? Number. Do I love it? You bet your sweet bippy I do. Didn't know this was a thing. I hate that my shower gets cold after like 5 minutes. Looked a few up and this seems a bit more complicated. And would probably need a pro to install. I want this. Just bought a treadmill. There is a perfectly good street outside I could run on. Or I could pay for a gym membership for years and years. But now I can get to run in during my daughter's nap time. 
or when it's cold, or when I only have 30 minutes free and driving to and from the gym would eat up half of my time. I certainly could have made it work without this expense, but I really love it. 600 euros for an hour of laps, 3 of 20 minutes each, around the Nürburgring in Germany. It was open in the off season and there wasn't a single other car near me the whole time. 10 stroke 10 one of the most thrilling experiences of my life. I'm buying this for my so for our honeymoon when we get married, and I'm so excited to see his reaction. Back in 2017 my family went on a road trip to Minnesota to visit my nana shortly before she passed. During our stay me and my little sister went to the Mall of America and bought whatever the frick we wanted. Big ice cream cones, Lego store souvenirs, tickets to the aquarium, fare for every indoor amusement park ride, a doll from the American Girl store and eating an expensive lunch in the store with your new doll sitting at the table with us freak yeah little sis it's all yours. I dropped over $300 in that one more trip but dang was it was one of our best shopping days ever. We still talk about it to this day. You're lucky you got away so cheaply. You can spend $300 at the Lego store with your eyes closed and one hand tied behind your back. I got into a stupid fight with my brother, so I found a game he had pledged on Kickstarter, Space Haven, and saw that for $360 I could write a pre-made character bio that would randomly show up. So I pledged it and wrote a character bio with his name and made him a flaming butthole. I have never played this game and don't want to. When I was younger I came into a sum of about $15k. I wasn't very careful with the money and other than putting $5k down on car, I blew the money here and there, but what I put the largest amounts toward were friends in need. I paid one friend's power bill just before it got shut off. I helped another friend keep her water on. I never could keep my hands on money for long but I don't regret having wasted it helping friends. And the friends remember it forever too. I got $27k and spent it on a solo cross country road trip that led to me moving on the complete opposite side of the country from everyone I've ever known. I was in a dark place in my head. The original plan was to find a nice place to end my story, but the trip itself helped me reconsider, so absolutely no regrets to speak of. The summer after graduating high school, I won a decent amount of money playing online poker. Since I wasn't going off to college and all of my friends were, I decided to buy them all ridiculous going away gifts. A carpet, mailbox, toilet seat etc. were among the gifts. The most expensive and ridiculous gift I bought on a whim was a massive wheel of cheese. Somewhere between $200-$300. Little did I know at the time, that cheese wheel would set off a yearly event called cheesy jiving where our entire, much larger now with spouses and kids, friend group gets together to celebrate and partake in cheesy goodness. This year was our 17th, unfortunately all virtual due to COVID, and I genuinely hope it never ends. This is great. Travel. I've never regretted spending money on travel. Those are some of my favorite memories. I can't wait to be able to travel again. Back in high school I was about to go on my first ever date and I made extra money to make sure I had enough around $600 I had. The day before our date she gave me a letter and she basically broke up with me. Being a teenager I had no control over my emotions as being brought up in my family would say guys shouldn't cry over anything but I had no way to process it. So after school I went to 7-Eleven bought two large slurpees. Six hot dogs and got a prepaid card and bought a bunch of Nico action figures. I actually had a good weekend because I honestly splurged on that money and got into action figure collecting as well practiced stop motion which ended up helping me to pursue a animation career and I'm about to finish and ready to apply to stop motion studios. The reason $600 was the date money is because my brother and best friend recommended me to take extra date cash in case she wanted to do extra stuff or to cover stuff instead of having to wash dishes or say no. I was able to get the cash because I work I do small jobs or help people out with heavy lifting. Me and the ex were doing stuff together like I would walk her home from school, get her coffee before school began, and hang out on campus and she did hide her relationship from her parents but yeah after the breakup I did see who she was as a person and very toxic, 
I am in my last classes before I graduate and I decided my senior film will be stop motion which is a daunting task but I have prepared myself and got everything ready. As living in LA I have a lots of studios to intern apply and I am working on a portfolio of sorts to show off my skills in stop motion and special effects on Adobe After Effects. To finish it off. I was going to courses for 3D animation and 2D as well but kinda sucked on them until I took a course in experimental and one of the assignments was to do a special animation called replacement animation and I decided to use some action figures and in it I did some stop motion which my professor picked up and praised for the poses frame by frame saying it's impressive that I got the movement down. The only draw right now is that intern positions are halted because of COVID and my fellow classmates are also disappointed that the internship spots at some studios the one to work for are halting or limiting internships so it's hard right now but for me it's giving me time to do more stop motion work trying to perfect it and trying out new methods or techniques. Comma as well practiced stop motion which ended up helping me to pursue an animation career and I'm about to finish and ready to apply to stop motion studios. Congratulations. Dyson blow dryer. It's worth every penny. I have long hair down to my waist. It only takes me about 3 minutes to dry it. That hair dryer. My wife loves it. And the cordless stick vacuums are freaking expensive as heck but holy crap they are awesome. I think I spent around a grand on gifts over the last holiday season including secret Santa stuff on Imga. Last year I got a really well paying job and I'm finally glad to be able to give back to people. I feel this. Right at the end after college I had a decent paying job. For a 23 year old. And as much as I liked having money to spend on myself after being a broke college student, I enjoyed more spending it on others. It spoiled my little sisters, bought a bunch of gifts for an adopt-a-family Christmas program, took my friends out for nice meals, etc. It was fun. Then the student loans came due. I spent $56,000 on college for a degree I don't use, but I met my husband there so I really can't complain. If I divide that over the nearly 25 years we've been married and consider that he's the best of dudes it is a pretty good deal. Same here for my masters. The subject was pretty broad and it hasn't really led me directly into a career, but I got to study in 3 countries, learn a language and meet a bunch of cool people. It's given me a new perspective on the possibilities in life that will never go away. I bet 250 years old dudes 200 US dollars each that they will and kiss each other in a bar in a deeply red midwestern town and yes they did it for 60 seconds little did you know they'd both been secretly waiting almost 50 years to do that i went to a renaissance fair with my husband and some friends it was his first time and he's a pretty introverted person so while he has fun watching everyone else dress up and act all goofy and old timmy he doesn't really participate. When we went to buy our first beer, the wench tried to sell him on one of those big mugs that looks like it's carved out of wood but it's just plastic. It cost $100. Yes, you get free refills, but we were not planning on drinking $100 worth of beer that day. I could tell by the look on his face that he wanted it he looked like a little kid at Disney World. Without thinking. I whipped out my credit card and dropped $100 on a crappy plastic mug. All day, he walked around proudly with his mug. He even took some big gulps and cheered Hazar once or twice. This might not seem like much but for my quiet, gentle giant, it is huge. I manage the finances in our relationship and I am constantly cracking down on wasteful spending. So I think we were both amazed I made such a dumb purchase. Four years later, we still have that mug. He gets a big grin every time he sees it and teases me about my irresponsible impulse. And every time I see it, I just think about how much I love that big galoot. He even took some big gulps and cheered Hazar once or twice. My heart. At a home inspector's recommendation, I had two sump pumps installed in our home's basement in case of water penetration. It was expensive not only to buy the sump pumps, but also to have the pump pits drilled and electric service supplied. Year after year, those pumps have never kicked in, but they're there, ready to go, just in case. You'll be praising your old self like never before the first time you hear them kick on. A business class ticket on a 14 hour flight. I ate great food and slept like a boss. 
made a huge difference to my trip as I didn't need to waste a day to recover. We needed to reschedule the last flight we took, and the only way to sit together, two kids, two adults, was upgrade to economy plus. It was about $20 seat, and I told my wife we're never flying regular economy again. Even on a 2-3 hour flight, that extra leg room is so nice. $300 hand sewn straw fleet jacket. Went to her con with a semstress and had her inspect the jacket. Her verification that it was quality work was the deciding factor. Spent like 30 minutes on the phone with the bank trying to prove this was me throwing away 300 in one go at a con 3 hours from my address. This may not seem like a lot of money to some but I weighted 287 pounds. I lost 100 pounds and my reward was a 300.00 pair of fry boots. I had been drooling over them for years and finally scrimped and saved to buy them. I told my husband it was my food money, lol. It was actually my cigarette money. I had quit smoking a year before that but still faithfully put away 7.00 a day. I figured that I could always find cigarette money when I smoked so I will keep finding it to save. I bought a Nintendo Wii that way too. I have never regretted using those boots. I love them. Let me add a note, I had helped losing the weight. I had lap band surgery which in of itself is another struggle. The weight came off pretty fast and now it's a bit of a struggle to keep it off. My greatest fear is gaining it back. I have a couple of sisters that had gastric bypass and gained their weight back. So that terrifies me. I am still about a size 14 which to me is healthy. I'm happy with that. This may not feel like much to some but it was important for me. I got divorced in my late 20s and I bought an Ehemony subscription to help me date again. This was before free apps were a thing. It was way more money than I could afford at the time, but it helped me realize that I was wanted and people would be happy to get to know me and date me. It helped me move on from an emotionally abusive situation to repair my sense of self-worth. It helped me realize that I was wanted and people would be happy to get to know me and date me. Yet, yeah, you don't get that from the free apps. Visiting the NBA finals while being an intern in the US I'm from Germany originally. Tickets were $300 each. Had to drive back the 3 hours from Cleveland to Detroit at night to show up at work the next day but dang. I'll never forget KD hitting the 3.45 seconds before the end. Friend spent $30 on a jukebox to play I whip my hair back and forth on loop for an hour in a bar. The bartender unplugged the machine. You can download the Touch Tunes app and pay to play songs at bars in a radius of your location. There's a club nearby that I sometimes put Let It Go from Frozen on at 1130 at night. Another song I throw in rotation is my dingaling. I spent about 6 grand on MC DJ for my wedding. But he was the most professional MC I've ever met. He coordinated all the sound with the videographer, the caterers around the speeches, pre-planned all music and mixed songs to be the perfect length. I didn't worry about a thing on the day. If you've ever been to a wedding with a terrible MC then you know the value in a good one. I walked out of a reception where the DJ kept playing hip hop rap about cheating. Nobody danced for the first 45 minutes. He just kept playing rap music and became abrasive and hostile when the parents bridal party made other requests. Apparently it got worse after we left. My older sister is obsessed with the Witcher games so I paid the main character's Geralt's voice actor to wish her a happy birthday. Doug Cockle seems like a really awesome guy. Glad you were able to make her birthday really special. My wife and I were on our honeymoon in London in 2016. We had just gotten an influx of cash from friends and family, and we went out to dinner at the Savoy Grill. They had an absurdly overpriced tasting menu with the option of overpriced wine pairings. We ended up dropping about $600, and it was honestly the best meal I've ever had. The service was off the charts, with little stories about each course and its accompanying wine, and they had the timing down perfectly. Just a fantastic experience from top to bottom. And if we didn't do it then, on our honeymoon with a bunch of free money, we were never going to do it. My first university degree, but it was really my parents money that I wasted. I don't do anything related to it now. I went back to get the degree that I wanted and everyone told me would be a waste of my potential afterwards. I now work in that field and love it. 
Moving away from home was one of the best things that happened to me because it allowed me to grow a lot as a person. And also my road bike. For grand. But I love every second on it. I just paid our full $8k healthcare deductible to send my wife to rehab. We're getting divorced and my lawyer told me I didn't have to pay for it. But she wouldn't have been able to do it otherwise. 8k is a small price to pay for her. Hopeful. Sobriety and treatment of her mental health issues. This was really kind of you. It would imagine there's something inside of her that will appreciate this gesture once she's passed everything. It'll mean a lot. A new car. I bought a Toyota Camry in 2016. Everyone told me I was crazy. We were in an accident on Thanksgiving 2020 with a drunk driver. That car saved mine and my husband's life. I don't regret it at all. You bought the most practical and reliable car on the market. What a crazy guy. 500 bucks on a home inspection. Revealed a whole bunch of problems that would have cost us thousands to fix. Always get an inspection. A home inspection is literally never a waste. $9k on a hot tub and its installation. I use it probably 2x a day and for those 30-40 minutes I am almost completely pain free. Sometimes bordering on euphoria. I mean, using a hot tub twice daily sounds like a great return on investment. I was engaged to my high school sweetheart when I was in the military. She had about 5k in credit card debt that had been hanging over her so I took care of it for her during my first tour in Iraq. I had no bills of obligations. Why not? Well, I spent another 4 or 5k coming home on leave mid tour and furnished our apartment, her, before going back down range. When my deployment tour ended, I came home and had to find out from my sister that some other dude, S, was seeing my fiance and one had been living in the apartment with her the better part of 6 months. When she found out I was back she ghosted me, changed locks etc. Her mother apologized to me in the neighborhood grocery store. I regretted it for a long time, mostly being angry, but I don't regret it anymore. It was a far less painful lesson than the ones I've seen men in their 40s come to terms with. At least I got my medicine in my 20s. That sucks but I'm glad you found out before y'all had kids. What are some not so subtle ways to tell actual wealthy people apart from flashy big spenders? I know a guy who will just pay your tab without saying anything. We'll all go out to bars and we will all get drinks with the intention of paying for it. And he'll just go up to the bartender and pay your tab. You won't even know he did it until you go pay and the bartender gives you your card and tells you oh, he got you, you're good. He's a super nice guy, and when I saw his house for the first time I realized why he does that. He's a freaking millionaire. If a bunch of us have a collective tab of $100 that's nothing to him so he just pays it. Don't get me wrong. I don't try and take advantage of it by making him pay for stuff, but he'll do that when you least expect it. I had a friend who used to do that, but stopped because people were exploiting him. He wasn't millionaire rich, just well off for a college student. But he bought pizza several times and people started expecting him to buy more pizza, and from a more expensive restaurant, and dinner at other places and blamed him for saying no. He doesn't do it as much anymore. Wealthy people often do wear expensive clothes but they are usually simple and not so stand out and don't really talk about the cost. Flashy spenders need to make sure the brand and value is known. That grey t-shirt that seemingly all wealthy people wear. There is no sure way to tell. My uncle has had 7 and 8 digit yearly incomes most of his adult life. And he lives in a middle class house and drives middle class cars. He dresses like an average dad and mows his own lawn. He owns nice beach houses, etc. But you don't see those or his stock portfolio just passing him on the street. I agree with you. I'm kind of surprised that so many people on here think there's a big noticeable difference. I went to school with a lot of rich people, and some of them were quite flashy, had stereotypical annoying rich people personalities, etc. But some just acted normal. They invest into education like crazy. Kids want a Maserati? Nope. Not going to happen. Kids want to learn the piano? Of course you can. Have as many lessons on the best piano as you want. They invest into the best teachers, the best universities, really overall the best education. Source. Someone in my family is a private wealth manager for filthy rich people. These are the people with money who actually care about their children. 
Not superficial spending by spoiling them but instilling the habits that will result in their own success. I've seen it myself also. The very wealthy people I've known are understated in all that they do and quiet about their financial status. Everything is of good quality and tasteful, with nothing drawing undue attention to itself. They frequently donate to worthy causes and don't seek recognition for their generosity. Whereas flashy types crave your attention, they often flaunt their wealth in obnoxious ways, taking pleasure in separating the haves from the have-nots. On a similar question someone had put this and it stuck with me since. Money talks, wealth whispers. They never talk about money, at least not in the same way others do. Like the way people who are naturally pretty never bang on about their looks or the benefits it affords them. It's kind of distasteful to bring up money in everyday company. I had a really rich daughter of an oil tycoon rich roommate at university, and when I'd casually mention the cost of something she'd look thrown off or surprised. She never bought things in advance to offset the cost like train or flight tickets. She'd literally show up and buy it on the day. Her family used to do their weekly grocery shop in freaking Harrods. LOL. I remember her buying some Briseola beef and casually mentioning she picked it up at Harrods. Blew my mind. She was super generous too. Don't know if they're all like that, but a lot of flashy people are stingy when it comes down to it the big spending only applies to themselves. I grew up dirt poor, so was always conscious about how much she was spending. Which caused us to drift apart because I'd get weird about her paying for things even though it wasn't a big deal for her. Sorry you drifted apart from a friend, but just wanted to say you're good people for not taking advantage of the situation. A lot of visual clues have already been said in this thread, so I'm gonna talk about my experience with wealthy people as a retail worker. I grew up in the part of my home city where the wealth was concentrated, and even though we have the best public school district in the state, there are many private school for all flavors of people. Where I work has a contract with pretty much every private school I can name, and dozens more I'd never heard of, for the uniforms. So in back to school season I get to meet kids who go to school with the children of prolific billionaires and their middle school tuition costs more than my college education, and the very affordable private schools, the lower level rich always flash, for reasons said in this thread, with branding, but even more so, it's about how they treat me and my co-workers, they are the most likely to give us the you are dirt attitude and have ill behaved children than the extremely wealthy. There are two women and their kids who stick out to me. The first had a purse with the Cadillac logo flashy and metal on the side of the purse, and was giving extreme attitude to me as I tried to ask what school her kids went to so I could look up their uniform rules in our books. She was insistent I should know, even though we serve over 200 private schools. During this time her kids were playing tag around the displays, and in the process dumped a bunch of clothes onto the floor and tipped over a display rack and tore the arm off a mannequin. She also sassed me for trying to tell her kids to stop playing around the displays. The other woman is to this day the kindest, nicest customer I've ever met. Her two boys were incredibly respectful and well behaved, and I nearly choked when she told me what school they went to. It costs more a year than my private university, and it's in a part of the city that is gated off to anybody but residents. Multiple famous tech billionaires live in this part of the city and send their kids to this school. They dressed well, but totally normal. No fancy branding or watches. I knew the purse she had was an off the runway couture purse, but only because I'm a big fashion fan. Anybody else would have just thought it was a black handbag from Nordstrom's. We were short staffed that day and it was just my manager and I, until my manager fell really ill and had to go home, until another manager could come and fill in and help, it was only me to cover the entire floor and the cash wraps, I was clearly stressed and still trying my best, but this woman waited patiently and even offered to call the school for me while I took care of other customers because they had errors in the uniform log they sent me, TLDR, from my retail experiences. I find that the extremely wealthy tend to be more kind to retail workers, whereas the big spenders splashers treat you kind of poorly, as if they have to prove they're better than you. From my experiences, actual wealthy people spend big on some things, but not all. They might have a really nice house, but wear pretty standard clothes and have a reliable but not flashy car, or they have a modest house and travel a lot. They prioritize what's worth splurging on and what isn't. 
I've even watched Shark Tank and these exorbitantly wealthy investors have said that they never fly first class or won't spend a ridiculous amount on a bottle of champagne. Flashy spenders will spend big on anything people can see. They might wear all designer clothes and have fancy cars, yet they're putting off seeing the dentist or paying the bare minimum on their monthly loan payments. They want people to look at them, but not to look too closely. Source. I went to a very wealthy college. On scholarship, many of the middle to upper middle class students and even their families went to pretty crazy lengths to keep up with the really wealthy ones. Kind of sad, actually, because most of my wealthy friends really didn't care how much money I had. Reddit loves the car story. There are plenty of actual wealthy people who have a nice selection of cars. Clothes that always fit extremely well and are always well kept. Just your basic looking clothes, but obviously someone who does not like wrinkles, lumps, etc. How they maintain their car. Some drive mid-level cars and it's quite easy to discern bullers on a budget and the low-key wealthy. Can't tell you how many Audi, BMWs, Mercedes I come across with caked on brake dust and pockmarked rims. The stupidly rich people I have met are rich because they don't go out and buy every little new shiny thing that comes out. They dress comfortably and generally don't give a frick. One guy I know had a very old and ragged wallet that was always thick with cash, carried around a Samsung S5. He would have kept his old Nokia dumb phone, but his wife, kids and grandkids wanted him use Skype and Messenger. Drove a low end orv and regularly buys food from street vendors. The only indication he's loaded is because his kids have all sorts of degrees from all those prestigious schools abroad and reside in various developed countries like US, Singapore, UK and etc. His house is also just big enough to accommodate his immediate family when they visit during the holidays but is located in a really pricey neighborhood. He and his wife maintain it themselves too, so no house help servants. Wealthy people who live in a wider society do not want you to know that they are wealthy. They have learned firsthand how envy can create social problems. That is, it is painful to lose a friendship because someone resents what you have. At the same time, they are going to enjoy the things they have. Vacations, education, a dress in a good building part of town, clean straight teeth, and well-fitting clothes are giveaways, but they are intentionally understated. Understand that a lot of wealthy people have adapted to blend in. Humans are social creatures, and even if you have more, no one wants to feel different from the group. Flashy wannabe types don't have an inherent understanding of how having more can isolate you or make you the target of envy or mutures. The genuinely wealthy adopt humility, generosity, and modesty not only because they have ample to share, but also because if they don't, they'll be socially ostracized. That is, unless they live in a world where everyone has the same as them, and then you tend to see more buttholes competing with each other again. When it comes to housing, location quality over size, every wealthy person I know has a, relatively, small apartment in the heart of the city, but is super high quality, every faker I know has a shoddy built McMansion in the middle of where, it's called Indiana Sweetie. When I worked at a utility company under electrical distribution, mainly dealing with electrical utility poles, cables etc, I remembered two specific cases back to back. First case, a rich couple with their gold chains, gold iPhones and Chanel handbag, was causing a fit, telling me to move a utility pole in front of their house because it was messing with their feng shui. I gave the professional answer of yes, but the cost was, equivalent 2000 US dollars, which of course was totally out of the question. I know the manager and this will cost you your job. I didn't really care for the job, so I actually suggested them to see the manager right now as he is currently in. They were surprised at my response, mumbled something, and left the room. To my knowledge, nothing came of it. Second case, an old man in khaki shorts, an old rock band shirt and worker's jacket. I'm not sure what the correct term it is. It's the jacket vest with many pockets and holes to put tools. Wrench etc. Coming in, I knew the guy was a technical guy. His hands were cleanish but his nails and some of his finger were slightly smudged with grease and he smelled like WD-40. We were talking engineering terms such as bending radiators, voltage drop etc. His concern? 
How can we redirect the main supply from one of our utility pole to be connected to a beta near his yacht to power charge his navigational equipment? Didn't even balk at the cost. Was just concerned if we could do it by the weekend. I have an aunt who tells you the brand and price of whatever she's got on. Without anyone ever asking. Oh hey, aunt heck. A kiss hi sweetheart. Here. Put my coat in the closet, it's Gucci $54,267. There was a nice Gucci purse I saw that matched my coat, but I much preferred this Prada purse for $7,420. Oh, okay, what a cute top. It looks comfy. My Versace top is super comfy. I got it for 753 euros. Almost as comfy as my 9,653 euros Versace jeans. GTFOH with that balls. We used to call those types label W. But I am not calling you onto W to be clear. All depends on their level of security. My parents are millionaires. But you'd never know it. They still live in their starter home because they like the neighbors. Dad drives a Chevy Colorado. Mom drives a 12 year old minivan because she likes it. They are very generous. But almost never mention money. The one exception? Took my mom on a biz trip to NYC. Was taking her out for a nice dinner and she realized halfway there she was wearing her Carhartt jacket. She stopped and said wait, is this okay then? Before I said anything she laughed and said whatever. I'm a millionaire. They can just think I'm eccentric. I know a lot of millionaires who wear Carhartt. It's a thing these days. Shorts and a nice polo shirt with sunglasses. Stereotypical golfer wear. A lot of wealthy men dress like that. Not sure why exactly. Probably because they like to golf. TLDR. Look at their kids. If they are misbehaving. More than an average kid might for their age. They probably care more about showing off brands than taking time away from their Lamborghini collection to make sure their kids are being given the attention they need. I went to elementary through high school with people way richer than I am. Egg. We'd get my shoes mended 3 or 4 times before buying another pair because we could not afford it. Anyway, the people I went to school with were the offspring of royalty. High government officials. Like actually rich. One thing I noticed between my classmates whose parents were new money and old money is how they talk to teachers and me. BTW for anyone wondering how I went here. I'll just say my mom was a teacher there and my dad was a very likable person to the school administration. People with new money or trying to be flashy would have drivers bring them expensive food they would never eat because their parents seemed to care that everyone saw what kind of food they could afford instead of what their child might actually eat. And, since these kids were hungry for food not delicacies they would demand lunch from the staff not understanding it cost money and they couldn't just demand and be handed whatever they wanted. They would give it to them not gonna leave a 10 year old hungry because their parents preferred to pay $70 for a fancy meal instead of just letting their kid eat canteen food from a school that has chefs because they made child friendly lunches. My friends that came from old money and, who I'd argue more influential parents didn't seem different from me aside from our clothes and transportation back home at the end of the school day. As a kid I didn't know they were rich rich. I knew they had more money than me because I had a car and a driver and my family didn't have a car. But it wasn't until I was invited to their house for a weekend that I realized just how different our lives were. As an adult now I realize that a huge difference in people with actual wealth and people that spend a lot or a new money is the way they raise their kids. They don't just know the value of investing financial assets but the value of time and how to properly raise and invest in their kids so they become well-rounded adults down the line. I've found that the flashy big spenders closer to the middle class end of the spectrum trying to appear wealthy. The wealthy people I've met are usually quite cheap, and that's usually how they got wealthy. They'll splurge on things they think matter, so look for someone that acts cheap but randomly has expensive things that seem out of place. In the UK, if someone has a Coots banking card, they are pretty okay financially. Sure someone can fill in the details, but I think it's £500 K in cash, income over £250 K, then perhaps £1 million in other readily available assets? Thank you everyone for your input and conversation. This is exactly what I wanted. In my personal experience, 
from the few extremely wealthy I've worked with in my business, there are no black and white distinctions. One guy could have a Rolls Royce and the other guy could have a Honda Accord and they'd both be $10 M plus in net worth, although the exact amount is never really discussed nor am I going to ask. I've seen proof of funds of $70 million from someone you'd never guess. From my own observations, properly wealthy couples have a certain kind of robust healthy look. People who have never been hungry or put themselves on a extreme diet plan. Fat sweaty rich men with super skinny younger wives are rarely in the same financial league as the comfortable looking middle aged couples. I read a book about millionaires a while back that discusses the difference between lifestyle and wealth. It pointed out that a lot of millionaires live modestly and that there's a clear difference between people who are struggling, living comfortably, the sweet spot, and trying to keep up appearances. So when I see a head of a household who has a modestly sized house, 150-200k, a few cars of modest value that are a mixture of old and newish, Toyota, Ford, Nissan, wears casual but clean clothes, Target, Old Navy, and as extended family living with them, my first thought if that person is loaded, especially if that person or their family members mention going out to eat occasion 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 they are clearly living comfortably with fewer worries than most. Wealth equals security. The millionaire next door. Good book. Fixed typo. I think most rich and well-to-do people dress like your average person, while people who flaunt their money will let you know with what they wear. According to my friends who work in job servicing them, hygiene is the dead giveaway. They are always well rested, manicured, fresh haircut that suits them well, pleasant scent, and so forth. They're also typically laid back because they don't have the crushing financial burden the rest of us do. Assistants, who also are well kept and professional are common. I live in an area that has many wealthy people, and a few people I know fall in that category. I find they often spend more money on quality rather than looks or style. For instance, they buy custom clothing from high quality retailers, but it's all fairly plain. They own a Rolex, but it's very subdued. They drive a practical, useful SUV that happens to be a Jag. Their houses are modest for how much money they have, but they put a lot of research into the area and you find a lot of quality and character in the details. Have an uncle that won the lottery in the early 90s. He still lives in the same house he and my aunt bought in the early 80s. From the outside it still looks like a little country house with split log siding, but inside is pure luxury. He drives an 80s Chevy pickup truck. Same story, outside looks like a work truck with worn paint and some rust, pop the hood and it's chromed out and super clean. Manners, someone that old money can tell you where the head of the table is, and why it's bad to be sitting past the salt and where that is. I've known some to casually mention that they're going to visit family on another continent just over the weekend. I knew a trust fund kid that had absolutely no social media footprint presence. I don't focus on others enough to care. My great grandfather taught me to never speak of politics or money when meeting new people. He told everyone he met that he was a fisherman to gauge their perceptions of him, while in reality he was a very accomplished commodity broker. He said to me a week before passing, we all come into this world alone and helpless, we leave the same, you are not your creator therefore you have no right to judge anyone. Money doesn't make one what they are, their actions do. Be fair and kind, but ruthless if need be. My husband is a supervisor at Cost Plus World Market and he gets wealthy people there every once in a while. Wealthy people are polite, tip well, and forget they bought $1200 worth of furniture 3 weeks ago because it's like nothing for them. That's actually happened multiple times at his store. Sometimes they never pick it up. I've worked in fine dining catering and I've dealt with a lot of upper middle class people and wealthy people. In my experience, upper middle class are stingy, rude, and treat you like they are doing you a favor by being in your presence. Wealthy people are once again polite, tip well, and invite you to join the festivities. They don't mind sharing some food or drink because frick it, they probably bought extra for the heck of it. At my uni we have a fair amount of international students, many of whom are well off. It's pretty obvious who's new money and who's not based on the clothes they wear. 
Generally, I've concluded that most new money students own a Canada Goose jacket or wear streetwear brands. For example, Bape, Off-White, Supreme, Anti-Social Social Club, etc. With the either a huge logo or the logo plastered all over the clothing. Most of the old money students don't need to be walking advertisements for these trendy fad brands and rarely sport visible logos on their clothing. They tend to go for more timeless luxury brands like Gucci, Versace, Balenciaga, Fendi, Hermes, etc. LOL. Gucci and Versace is new money crap nowadays. If they are returning Jeopardy champions and their face doesn't move when their cumulative total is announced at the start of the show, they are probably pretty well off. The librarians and unemployed actors roll their eyes, shake their heads, shrug, etc as though their $11,387 is a game changer, which I'm sure it is, in a small way. The wealthiest players are probably losing money taking time off to play the game for mere thousands. A cab driver in Harvard Square pointed out the kids sitting in front of the tea station and said look at those little brats. Crappy clothes. Great teeth. This is a generalization but mostly true. Poor people name their kids Bentley, Porsche, Coco. Wealthy people name their kids James, Catherine, Charlotte if you have to try that hard to seem wealthy you're not. Some wealthy folks are really frugal. I sat behind Warren Buffet and coach on a freaking United flight once. You don't get rich by wasting money. One time my dad introduced me to someone without giving me their last name. In private. I asked him about it. And he said their last name was. Insert huge international company name worth billions of dollars. Those people have to buy kidnapping insurance for their children. If they have kids you can usually see it in them. I'm not talking about in a bad way, but just the quality of the stuff their kids have. I figure skate and one dad was in what looked like sweats every time I saw him at the rink. Turns out it was probably workout gear because he is a pro hockey player. On test day his kid showed up in the most gorgeous dress. Like it probably cost close to $1000. Kids in my area who are competitive sometimes have dresses like this. She wasn't for competitions but you rarely see them at a test day. Most of the stuff she wore wasn't flashy, or excessive, or covered in brand names. But this was a hint that when ordering a dress for a test day, it wasn't a big deal to spend a grand as opposed to a couple hundred bucks. Like they went to the same website as the rest of us to order a dress. So same brand and stuff. Their budget was just a lot different. Also the rich kids always have stuff and good repair even if it's not flashy. Like new skates every season. No tights with rips in them. Newer looking practice clothes, etc. The rest of us are skating around in scuffed up skates we're hoping to get another season out of before they die. Faded workout tights. And our skating tights probably have holes in the toes. When you're rich. There's no need to make do with stuff that's getting old. If your skates are wearing out, you just buy new ones. Tights with holes go in the garbage. That sort of thing. I've worked in the wealthiest and most exclusive suburb in my state where some people arrive in Jaguars, Ferraris, etc. Discoveries and RR sports are common but often their cars are more practical. People love land cruisers in Ors. The most obvious signs to me are how a person takes care of themselves. Slim, toned, average or athletic but rarely bulky or obese. Men and women all take good care of their teeth especially. Moisturize. Rarely sunburned. Beards and long hair are uncommon in men but this may just be an age generational thing. I'm people from this demographic tend to be very value oriented. They're happy to spend money but only if there is justification for the cost. What are some luxury items, which you never knew existed, which only the mega rich can afford, that blows your mind and you wouldn't mind having or is just an example of how people have too much money and not enough sense. Went to a billionaire's home who didn't have a pool. He had a man-made lake with an island in the middle and boats jet skis. It's not really a luxury item. But this guy I knew in the dorms never wore socks more than a day. He just put on a new pair, right out of the package every day and toss the old ones in the trash. It's not like he even did his own laundry either, he just collected his clothes in a big bag and someone would pick them up at the front desk and return them washed and neatly folded once a week. He was shocked to discover that the rest of us not only did our own laundry, but also laundered our socks. Oh my goodness, 
My grandma knew some rich girls in college that stayed in the dorms, that would only wear an outfit once and then throw it away, so my grandma and other girls would go dumpster diving for the rich girls clothes, wash them and keep them for themselves. I know a couple who live in NYC who have a live-in nanny for their two dogs. They hire a different veterinary student every few years. The student gets their own suite, a town car, a generous salary in the high five figures, paid trips home twice yearly, and nice bonuses. Their only job is to care for the pets, including home cooking their meals, walks, training and any appointments. By all accounts, it's a pretty sweet gig. I love it when people treat their hired workers like people and not like slaves. Back before Cleveland Clinic built their hospital in Dubai the Middle Eastern rich used to come here for organ transplants. They needed to stay for 6-8 weeks till they could go home to recover. My boss's husband worked in construction and got a job to modify a house for one of these guys. They picked out a house, offered the owners frick em all money to get out in 48 hours. The crew came in and worked around the clock to modify the house. They flew in materials from all over the world. Marble, stonework, stained glass windows. Money was no object. Also some rich oil dude can live in it for a couple of months and never come back. The wealthy version of a public storage unit. An exceptionally wealthy family I know refers to a wing of the local art museum as their public storage unit. They funded the wing to store their huge collection of classic and modern art since it was more practical than private storage. It included a climate controlled, 24 stroke 7 secure location managed by professionals. Plus, the curators would handle the swapping out of pieces to from the museum and the home when they needed a different style or era to fit the mood of the next dinner or event at the house. Which was funny because sometimes the swaps would introduce a dozen or so pieces not before displayed at the museum, essentially creating a new exhibit that the museum would package and promote. Behind the fuss. The family just wanted to create the right ambience for grandma's 80th birthday party. I agree with the other comments that this one has a nice practical upside for the family and the public. For whatever reason though, the amount of wealth represented by this arrangement seems truly staggering. Some super riots have support vessels or shadow yachts. It is essentially a second ship that follows you and your yacht and carries smaller boats, jet skis, helicopters, subs, you name it. Just the most exorbitant toy hauler. A guy in my town bought 4 plots of construction places for houses across the street and turned them into garden. Solely so his view wouldn't be deteriorated. The plots were 500k each. Rotating garage floor. Owner hated idea of backing out of a garage. The floor would rotate 180 degrees when he's ready to drive out. I heard Tom Cruise doesn't want to look uncool by backing up his motorcycle when he drives it so he pays someone to follow him and after he parks his cycle someone would stop and turn it around while he does his business and Tom can just jump on and drive straight ahead like a cool guy when he leaves. I used to work for an engineering firm and we did the engineering, HVAC, plumbing, electrical, fire protection. For high-end residential in NYC, there was a client who owned a floor in an apartment building on Central Park West. The people below him moved out so he bought that floor to host parties. He had a 6 inches thick sound and vibration dampening system installed on that level so he wouldn't bother the people that lived below. The building was old and the existing elevator would not stop the additional 6 inches higher on that floor only, so he installed a new elevator in the building. He also paid for French plasterers to come and live in NYC while they do the ornate plaster crown molding in the apartment. Wow what a nice guy doing that for his neighbors. My boss, who's exorbitantly rich, tasks his employees to buy things for him, and recently asked the lab department to order a scale capable of measuring to the 0.001 of a gram. So I give him 3 options between $1200 and $2400 US dollars, and he elected to go with the most costly version as it has a windscreen, and he wants it's rushed and received ASAP. This scale is built when ordered so we negotiate a fee of $800 to jump the line and have it delivered by our meeting in 3 days. It turns out his at home scale that he uses to meal prep has gone out and instead of buying batteries to replace, he decided to rush order a $2400 scale that doesn't operate on batteries, so he can meal prep for next week. Crap, 
for a small fee and expenses, I would have replaced the batteries in less than 3 days. I remember doing a job at a very rich family's country house in Denmark. They had around 20 horses there and staff hired to ride them because the family themselves had no time for that. I had a friend who sort of did that, the riding, and we ended up at dinner and the owner was like well why buy a $5,000 horse? A $500,000 horse costs the same to keep and they might earn you some money. I understood it but dang. This one is a bit dated, you'll see why. I know a lady that went to spend the night with a friend and was gifted an entire Encyclopedia Britannica set. That sounds weird in 2021, but this was the late 70s and you couldn't just google or wikipedia things. Just owning an entire set of Encyclopedia Britannica was a sign of wealth. They were a very expensive and non-essential item to fill up a bookshelf and look rich. People bought these things on payment plans like a car. Turns out they had many sets stored somewhere in their house just to hand out as very large and heavy gift to visitors. After all, how rich must you be if you can afford to hand out a sign of wealth like that just for visiting? It was a mega power move. In around 05 my grandfather bought a set of Encyclopedia Britannicas for each of his 11 children. Very pretty on a shelf. Rarely used anymore. Thanks grandad. I watched a documentary once on food rich people eat and there was a place that provided caviar that came from, get this, sturgeons that get played live jazz music, recorded jazz music wasn't good enough, it had to be performed live by a pianist, live jazz, for fish. Imagine being the guy that plays the piano for a bunch of sturgeons in a tank and explaining this to your date la mayo. My friend's boyfriend is very wealthy with a massive art collection. Someone comes to his house once a week and moves his art around, bringing some out of storage and keeping the displays fresh. Thank you for the silver, kind Redita. That's actually pretty terrific. The art stays in rotation and is appreciated. Bonus. Someone with curatorial and art handling experience is employed. As I'm a plumber, I recent installed a smart shower which I've known about. But this one had two rainfall heads 8 body sprays. The unit also has a sauna steamer built in and can connect to your phone. So when you're driving down your street you can pick the aroma you'd like and set the temp of your shower so when you walk in it's just ready for you. I knew a family that had a lot of household staff, including a person who had the responsibility of setting up, troubleshoot, and get this, charge all their personal electronic devices. Yes, their job included charging all the electronic devices. Seasonal furniture, meaning their house is furnished multiple different ways, furniture included, and they pay someone to store it and swap it out a couple of times a year. Seems easier to just have a different house for every season. A penthouse owner has a private elevator but also their garage is a lift so you can drive home and when you open your car door you're at the same level than your apartment. A private garage elevator? Yeah look at Porsche design tower in Miami. Exactly what you describe. I think the garages can fit two or three cars and are on the same level as the unit. Not an item per se, but once I read that some rich people have to get kidnapping insurance for their kids or something like that. I once worked at a 24 stroke 7 call center that was mostly for a bunch of area hospitals and large clinics, but there were some private doctors as well. There was this one account for a concierge doctor for the super rich. My supervisor told me that they paid a membership fee every month. I don't recall the exact figure, but it was in the multiples of thousands of dollars. And they got this doctor on call for them whenever wherever 24 stroke 7. Someone once called with a hangnail and the doctor went and attended to it. My friend's boyfriend works for a racing team as a mechanic for the series below Formula 1. You know how you can buy a house on a golf course. Well, according to her. There are houses on racetracks, same concept as the golf course, that blew my mind. I knew there were houses that were as good as on racetracks like with Imola, Spa and naturally any street track but I didn't think they would be on them for some reason. Michael Bay on the The Island commentary, comma he knows about a wealthy prince, who he won't name, who has his own 747 jet complete with a surgery unit on the top floor. Inside there at all times is a 24 year old man with the same blood type whose family has been paid off so that when the prince's heart gives out surgeons can perform a transplant from the younger man. 
I can credibly tell you that this is dead true, but I'm not gonna tell you the country where it's from, but I know people who've actually been on the plane, and I know people who've actually met the kid. Let me introduce you to my walking talking organ donor who lives in this plane. He doesn't say much because his family donated his organs for monetary gain while he was still alive. I'm from Ireland so I'm gonna say horses. Rich people here love their high standard. Thoroughbred horses. If you can afford race winning, stallion semen, you're doing well in life. Rich people are seriously obsessed with horse semen and to their mares freak. In Ireland, if you own multiple horses, you are either very wealthy or very poor. You can buy clothing that is made to order and then multiple copies are made and put into the closets of all your residences. That way you don't have to pack when you travel because a complete wardrobe is in every home. While not having to pack any time you travel would be the dream. Can air. It was a trend in China for a while. Rich people would get canisters of air from Banff or somewhere in Canada. And just take a few breaths of it at like parties or whatever. One of the investors of the previous company I used to work at was a billionaire. I didn't spend too much time with him, but he was always around during company parties and such, as were most of our early investors. The most woe moment was when he talked about his house in Telluride, Colorado. Nope, he's not a skier. Nope, he's not someone who likes the mountains. Nope. It's not some real estate that he's hoping earns money. He bought it because he liked the idea of having a mountain ski retreat available to him at any time. He's owned it 10 years, and aside from visiting it when he first bought it, he's never stepped foot in it. This guy was too much of a big shot to rent a vacation house. He only wanted to stay in ones he owned, even if he never visits it. His kids use it though for winter sports, so it's not completely empty all year. A drawer installed in the kitchen to specifically keep donuts warm. I never knew this was a thing but now I have goals. I helped in a kitchen of a Native American restaurant and they let me have access to the bannock drawer. And salmon pate. Hola. My parents-in-law built a new house and got a tap in their kitchen which dispenses hot, cold, boiling and sparkling water. DuPont Registry. People buy items. Never taking possession of them, just to have their name listed as the owner in the various registries. The actual item just sits in a vault someplace, with owners changing every so often and likely never actually seeing it in person. DuPont is just one of the more widely known ones. Are so kinda like my Steam library. Not an item, but one of my close friends went to LA for an internship in college, and met a girl there whose whole job it was to feed the meter outside this ridiculously rich film producer's apartment. He had a white Lamborghini, and rather than have it stored in the building's garage like a normal person, he liked it to be parked on the street where it was more easily accessible should he leave his apartment, so she could basically do whatever she wanted with her time, seven days a week, as long as she fed the meter before time ran out. Whenever I think people are not that stupid to just burn away money I remember that one patch up in this city had dog crap holding bags sold for $10 for 3 bags deal almost the 10 price of the normal thing because it had seasonal Christmas decor and people bought it like mad. Comma I love money. I love everything about it. I bought some pretty good stuff. Got me a $300 pair of socks. Got a fur sink. An electric dog polisher. A gasoline powered turtleneck sweater. And, of course, I bought some dumb stuff, too. Steve Martin. Not an item, but the ability to make anything a reality. I saw a documentary on Candy Spelling covering the sale of her, and her late husband's, $150 million home and downsizing to a multiple floor penthouse. She wanted granite stone counters, a rose garden and a pool up there, so the developers had to change the building plans to accommodate her wishes. They acted like it was nothing to re-engineer an entire building. Worked with a guy who grew up with tons of money. Their, extremely large, house caught fire while family was eating brunch. It was heavily involved so fire department used a ton of water, which the mother worried would ruin the family artwork, valuable furniture, etc. After it was over, the chief walks parents through the house and shows how they moved all the contents of home to center of rooms and covered with tarps, saving a good deal of their items. 
As a thank you she bought them another fire truck. Believe she's made smaller donations over the years when she hears they need something. Last I heard, it was the new Scott thermal imaging cameras built into the individual firefighters facet pieces. That's actually cool as crap. My uncle is a doctor. He has been the lead board member for the biggest hospital, and a world famous one, in my area for the last 4 stroke 5 years. Dude is loaded, so much so that I learned he has a personal tram, think ski lift, to his house. WTF, never knew those were a thing. Buying books by the foot, have a new house with lots of bookshelves that you want filled, pick what types of books you want, Balam, full library. When done this way, books are sold by the foot. I have 1000 feet of bookshelf space and want 500 feet of classics, 250 feet of fashion based coffee table books, and 100 feet of science fiction. Fill in the rest with contemporary fiction. There was a designer talking about how he'd buy books like this just not by the genre, but by the color. Doesn't matter what the subject is. It has to look expensive and good with the rest of the furniture match the carpets or the pillows or something. <laughs> Client of mine had a custom upholstered leather cushion built into the wall above the man cave urinal. This way when he is blind drunk he can rest his head against it to pee. Obscene wealth is an understatement. That's not something I have need for, and your client probably spent a ridiculous amount of money on it. But if I did want one, I could probably get the materials for less than $50 and build it on a Saturday. It's the routine drunkenness to the point of struggling to pee that I think is worrisome here, not the money. <laughs> Country club memberships. I always knew what they were but didn't realize how much they were and how it works. My in-laws belong to one. They pay 40k dollar sign plus per year to golf and be members. Along with this membership, you are required to spend a minimum amount per month either playing golf, dining or whatever else you spend money on at these places. I believe the minimum at my in-laws place is $800 per month. Nothing like 50k dollar sign to find friends. I think our towns is $500 a month. My former co-worker and her husband are members but her family were members when she was a kid. My cousin's mansion has heated floors in the garage. He said it sounds really stupid, but when the weather is freezing, he just turns on the floor heat a few minutes before he's ready to leave and it warms up his car so he doesn't have to. Like, I don't personally need that in my life, but if I had it, I would use it. I used to work on yachts when I was young, free and single. Some of the extravagant displays of wealth were simply appalling and frankly repugnant. But there was one that caught my eye and I still think about years okay, decades, later. There's a Middle Eastern oil shake that visits a Savile Row tailor for all his clothing needs. Shirts, suits, formal, informal, smoking, dinner, you name it, even down to his underwear. That's not extravagant. What comes next is, he buys four sets of, every, single, item. He then has each wardrobe sent to one of his usual homes, his primary home, his villa in the south of France, his house in London, and his rather large gin palace motor yacht, all so that he doesn't have to worry about his luggage, he knows exactly what clothes he has when he arrives at the other end, no packing, no lost luggage worries, no crumpled shirts, no worries, I sometimes can't stop thinking how clever and liberating this must be, and yet how decadent this is both at the same time. Maybe it's just all of these, I don't know, but I'm impressed and horrified in equal measure. The more wealthy a family is, the harder it is to find the kitchen trash can. This is almost always true from what I've seen. Office staff. A friend of mine worked as office staff for a woman who came from old money. She had various houses all over the place and had office staff at each location who spent their days doing for her the things you need done when you have tons of cash and nothing to do all day. She of course had all the standard household staff as well. This woman would beckon my friend with requests like last month when I was in Rome. A saw jacket in a window I really liked. Get me the jacket. So my friend would spend days talking to the concierge at the hotel the woman stayed at, the limo driver and various people trying to figure out what jacket she was talking about. She was usually successful in getting this woman whatever she wanted. This same woman called her into her office one day and said I just heard that people pay 99 cents to download a song from the internet. 
That's a lot of money. Who can afford to do that? This is the same day the same woman spent $30,000 on a bracelet. My friend had to do all this woman's Christmas shopping and would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars buying various relatives and acquaintances big ticket items like big screen TVs. She gave my friend, who busted her butt working for this woman, a Christmas present too. A set of cheap placemats. I thought you were just taking the pee out of the devil wears Prada. And then I read the second paragraph again lol. I work in procurement and bought a big wigger 20k tollied from Italy that would analyze your waste and text you a biometric readout. R makes sense if it actually works. Rich people are obsessed with health usually. My dad had a friend. He used to drive an old Toyota pickup. Rusted to heck. He wore flip flops all day. Surf shorts and shirts covered in holes and a constant surfer tan. He also owned two blocks of high-end beachfront flats and an upper-class beachfront hotel or two. I forget. I envy that he doesn't have to prove anything to anyone. Yeah. A financial advisor friend told me his wealthiest client dresses like he's homeless. Where I live. Dressing down is smart to deter mugging, etc. What's the most ridiculous f ed up thing you've done for money? NSW. When I was 18, the owner of the restaurant I worked at and the bartender were talking about the bartender, amateur paintball player, s new paintball gun and how fast it could shoot. 18 year old me and my arrogance interjected that getting hit with a paintball gun doesn't hurt that bad. Owner offers $300 for me to take a 10 second blast from bartender's new gun. Challenge accepted. This was a whole spectacle. The entire restaurant staff and my mom and brother, owner called them stood and watched me attempt to take paintballs to the back from about 15 yards away. I made it less than 5 seconds and we counted something like 28 welts on my back and arms. Boss gave me $150. Best part? Next day was my high school graduation. You know how many times I got patted on the back? Nice of bossman to give you something. I submitted an online survey 1000 times for a $1000, even though it stated 1 per person for a dollar. There was a glitch and I took advantage of it. I responded to a Craigslist ad asking for someone to beat him up while he masturbated. He was willing to pay upwards of $200, was as weird as you would expect. 10 stroke 10 would do again. I'd honestly be scared of getting killed. Let my friend hit me on my bare butt with a 1 inch and diameter wooden curtain rod. It hurt to sit a certain way for a few days but money. Cool. Didn't think this dumb crap would blow up. That's hilarious. But money. Not me, but a friend of mine during an excursion was dared to jump in the Sydney Harbour at Circular Quay for $20. It was apparently polluted and there were signs around with warnings of fines. He stripped down. Jumped in and got straight out. A seemingly invisible cop appeared and fined him $50 on the spot. Jumped off the ferry at Circular Quay once and got glandular fever. Was right after a storm and the water was a sickly brown. Donated plasma to make rent and got super super sick because I was battling an infection I didn't know I had at the time. Only got $150 from the clinic for the plasma but I'm still paying a $700 medical bill for blood work and fluids Lomeo. You basically paid a hospital $550 to take your blood out and then put it back in. I draw P for some side money, so I'm no stranger to weird commissions. But this wasn't like that. I had someone who had made a throwaway account contact me about a specific arrangement. They wanted me to email them on a fairly regular basis, 3 plus times a day. The most I sent in one day was 23, in an ongoing roleplay where I would demean them call them names, and occasionally demand money from them. It only lasted a month, but they paid me around $500 over that time. Can't say I wouldn't do it again if they ever came knocking. I have this going on with my student loans right now. We paid a kid $10 bucks to lick a petri dish that had some sort of foodborne illness on it in biology class. He spent a week in the hospital. This is the best, dumbest, so far Lomeo. Awesome. I sold someone photos of my feet when I was 13. I was at a car wash with my sister and wearing some modest heels. It was after church. I was wandering around while she cleaned the car, and a 40 something man offered me $200 to take pictures of my feet, in my shoes. I never took them off, 
So consider that I'm 13 and I'd never even seen to $100 so of course I said yes. Somehow I knew what I was doing wasn't 100% okay, though, so I kept it to myself until it came up at a party when I was 17. I had a row crap moment and everyone had a good laugh about one of the most innocent people they knew probably being on a feet website somewhere. It was unintentional but still f ed up. In my high school chemistry class I drank about half a bottle of imitation vanilla extract for $20. It was awful going down, but my breath smelled like heaven and greatness afterwards. In rehab people will pay you $20 to let them do this. I'm a commission artist. When I first started out, I drew a lot of furry and my little pony NSW for people. They paid a lot, but it wasn't worth the mental strain anymore after I got asked by this one person to draw a big titty goth pony girl with a soiled diaper freaking a Nazi pony girl in latex. Needless to say, I decided to throw in the towel there and then. Drank canola oil for $6. Said I'd do it for $5 as a joke. Someone put $6 on the table and I couldn't back out, threw up, but spent the money on two Mountain Dews and a Slim Jim to wash away my shame. Two stroke 10, wouldn't do again. Playing 21 dares and I drank four shots of olive oil one after the other. I threw up twice and had to sit down for two hours trying to force the puke down. Sold my lunch to a fat hungry kid for $5 in grade 5. He even raised the bid many times starting from $1. Never seen the money for 20 years. Hey to break it to you man, but seeing as you haven't seen the money, you didn't sell your lunch, it was strategically stolen. In high school I worked at an automatic car wash. It was a touch free system but the sensors failed a lot and would misjudge the length of the cars. The padded arm would hit the vehicles all the time. It was cheaper to pay an idiot to stand with his hand on the emergency shut off all day getting sprayed in the face with hot mist than to fix the sensors. It was a long, hot summer for this idiot. I'm assuming your username is the nickname you earned there. More ridiculous but I took a shot of vinegar for $20. Had it halfway down my throat when the guy said he was kidding and didn't think anyone would do it. In the end he gave me what he had in his wallet. A single dollar. I have it in my nightstand and refer to it as the vinegar dollar. My roommate just drinks the leftover vinegar when he's done using it for his fries. 10 years ago I being male and obese, 270 lbs, think man boobs, participated in a wet shirt contest at a bar and won $75. The other contestants were actually women. That's freaking awesome. When I was 8 years young I pee in the sink at school for a dollar. He did not pay me the dollar, and then he told on me, I really needed that dollar too. That man grew up to be 6'9". I sent nudes to a guy with some unusual fetishes. Eventually he offered me $60 for a video of a close up of me pooping and I actually considered for a good while. Instead I just quit, I forgot to mention, but he also offered me the same payment but for a close up of me farting. The guy was actually B. So to all the guys wishing they could do this, don't let your dreams be dreams. Frisky people on Whisper are an equal opportunity employer. If someone's willing to pay $60 for crap vids, they are gonna spend $100, $150, maybe $200. You should have bargained a bit. My older brother used to keep his porno mags at the very top shelf of my closet. Perfect place where nobody could reach and my mother would never look. One day I had discovered them while my little boyfriends were over playing N64. Tomboy little sister here for your information. So of course they all started fighting over it and asked if they could take certain pages. So I requested a dollar per page and that quickly moved on up to five dollar sign page. Word got around recess that I was hustling porno pages for cash. Racked up some good dollar sign that year for a ten year old. Brother had no idea and obviously couldn't ask his little sister where his mags were. It was the perfect hustle. Update. Dude thanks for all the love and awards. I've never really told anyone and I figured Reddit would be the perfect places for all the questions. Yes this occurred in the late 90s. I'm pretty sure we were all addicted to Wave Race and Goldeneye at the time. Definitely not my father's mags since he hadn't been around in years. And no I'm not a diabetic but I did drink the crap out some Kiwi Berry Ruckus Fruitopia. 
Not me, but my friend wanted COD Black Ops 2 to play with me, so she had fricked this guy who was borderline obsessed with her in exchange for the money to buy the game. I still give her flack over this. I personally didn't offer this deal for two reasons. 1. I was in a committed relationship at the time and 2. I had like no dang money to even buy her at lol. Not me specifically but I accompanied a friend who was paid $250 to attend one of those free house flipping seminars and sabotage it at the conclusion. I was just asked to film it on my phone as proof. We both signed up with fake names. My friend advised everyone it was a huge scam to get everyone to pay $2000 for the next class and then advised everyone at the conclusion of that class they would want $10,000 for the next class. I guess the guy who paid him was ripped off by this program. Everyone was mortified but I think it served its purpose and I don't think anyone was scammed that day and my friend paid my bar tab that night. Dang. Good times. At first I assumed it was a rival scam setting up the sabotage but it's even better that it was a disgruntled former scam ee. You know there's a deep grudge when they're spending $250 just to frick with them in any way possible. I wrote term papers and research papers for $20 per page for rich idiots when I was in college. I could have been expelled if I was caught, and I realized later that I probably should have been charging way more since I was earning degrees for other people who now probably make way more money than I do. Should have charged $60 per page at the very least, it's high risk so of course it's gonna be high cost. When I was a waiter we had a bucket of mayo on the line that basically never got used. It would build a thick yellow crust throughout the morning shift that we would skim off before the night shift. My buddy owed me $40, so I told him if he ate an entire spoonful of the mayo crust before the night shift I'd call it even. He did it, and looked like heck all night. Totally worth it. We stayed lifelong friends and were groomsmen at each other's weddings nearly a decade later. Not me, but my friend. I helped him with it so I think I can tell it. Long story short, he was catfishing some dudes into thinking he was an attractive woman and managed to get a guy who offered a good amount of money for feet pics. Very specific feet pics. Q was spending the rest of a Saturday afternoon getting baked, shaving my friend's legs below the knee, painting his toes, raiding our roommate's shoe rack, with her consent OFC, and taking these very specific feet pics for this dude. The money was sent later that evening. Pretty much paid for weed for our apartment for the semester. Teach 16 weeks of a college class for $1,600. No benefits as an adjunct, the fked up thing is I care about doing a good job for these students. Same here. Okay, I was a bad child but this guy was kind of dong and deserved this and that will be explained farther down. I poured sewage waste from my dogs on his porch. I got $60 for it. Guy used to shoot us in the leg with fake bullets that hurt like heck and would also shoot me and my friend's dogs. And if he is somehow on reddit and sees this, frick you for using your height against 12 year olds and their dogs. Whoever paid you that money has reasonable morals. I approve. I had an entire brown onion in hospitality class, junior high. About halfway through I felt like I was about to throw up and no one wanted to speak to me my breath was that bad. However, I did go and spend that $5 on a meat pie. Totally worth it. That's not so bad. The Prime Minister of Australia ate a raw onion live on TV for reasons that no one will ever understand. Drank a bowl of ghost pepper diablo sauce for $15 at the Mexican restaurant I work at. I spent an hour in the bathroom with years streaming down my face and my tongue out. I don't doubt you lost years there. I ate a strip of raw bacon off the floor without using my hands for $100. Then I gave the money back to the kid who paid me because I got him to drink a mug of bacon grease mixed with my spit. I know that raw bacon is actually pre-cooked. Thank you friends. So you both did disgusting crap for free. Not me, but my dad. When he was a kid his friend's mom called him and told him their dog had been hit by a car and she wanted him to come put it out of its misery. He was 14 and it was a boring summer so he grabbed his shotgun, which he just had I guess. 80s were different times, and went over to help out his friend. He then took his friend to the arcade in the movies with the money he got. It's not just the 80s. In a lot of rural areas or place where hunting is still an avid pastime in the US most teens get their own gun to use around that early teenage. 
I wrote a fishing bot for an online MMO and released it to the public for free using my in-game character name. 2003 to 2005. People loved it. Had over 250,000 downloads. I got about $2,000 in PayPal donations and people would give me money in game. Sometimes millions of gil at once. Became such a problem in the game the company rewrote how fishing works to make it harder to bot. Breaking every fishing bot. I rewrote a new bot in another language and kept it private. But I botted a game so hard. I made a AAA game company rewrite part of their game. In college, I worked a warehouse job. My manager always skeeved me out a little, but it wasn't until later he got real creepy. He was in some weird gambling sort of group, and needed someone to record him performing various tasks. I recorded him sticking his dong in a hole. Raw chicken he went and bought from the grocery store after work one time. He paid me like $150 for 30 seconds of video. He would pay me and another girl I worked with to go and buy women's undergarments that he would send into pics of him wearing to the group. Once he paid 200 US dollars if we could discreetly slip him our bra by the end of the work day. Flashing the camera at work during busy work times without anyone seeing. Random stuff like that. Easy money. But dude was a weirdo. There was no group. I fricked someone's wife. He was a cuck and wanted to treat her for her birthday. Direct messaged me saying she had picked me out. After some negotiating he agreed to pay me 300 pound squids if he could watch. I took a friend who waited outside the hotel room in case anything shady went down. He actually offered me an extra 200 if I would pull out right before and unload on his face. I declined that offer. 200 pounds is 200 pounds. Spent 9 hours a day 5 days a week doing activities I don't enjoy to make a company I don't care about more money than I could ever dream of having. You dirty beast. Oh god I'm going to be doing that. Aircraft mechanic. Spent the first stint of my career with my arm shoved down a lavatory hole for $15 an hour. Scooping out handfuls of crap and other excrement is a memory burned into me. Being hunched over you have to scoop it out at mouth level and sometimes the flapper would close real hard and spray chunks onto you. 10 stroke 10 will never ever do that again. Don't care if it costs me every job I get from now on. Years ago I was working at an archaeological site near Gaza. Excavating a city wall built to defend against the European Crusaders. We had been using a bulldozer for the heavy lifting, which unfortunately gauged out parts of the wall with its teeth. Toward the end of the field season we had an inspector coming from the Israeli Antiquities Department, so my supervisor had me put on some rock climbing equipment and rappel down the thousand year old fortification wall with a bucket of mud to slap over the bulldozer damage and hide the bulldozer scrapes gauged across its surface. Holy crap my life is boring af. This wasn't me, but we used to take an empty 20 ounces soda bottle and fill it with the lunch contents of the day, as well as other liquid, and then we would get people to pool money so another kid would drink it, some teachers would throw in money as well. Wild times. The fact that some teachers were in on this is just amazing. Went streaking in minus 5 degree weather for $20 and a dime bag. Are my early 20s when my stupidity outweighed my decency. That crap worth. Abused an ad on reddit. They offered me a $5 Amazon gift card to do a survey. Clearly this is limited to one time per person. I stopped around 150 or so times. Wash dishes for 2 years at $5.25 an hour. Did it for about a year before the owner up and decided we didn't need two dishwashers on the weekends. We did. I then did the work of two people for the same money after that. Restaurants really know how to exploit the labor of naive teenagers sometimes. I once gave my brother $20 to run down the block in just his underwear in the middle of a blizzard. We both had a good laugh afterwards. I used to act as a homework broker. I'd find kids who wanted me to do their HW for money. Set them up with smart friends of mine at college, and essentially give my college friends contracts and once they completed the work I'd get paid by the clients, I'd take a 10-20% cut, depending on how friendly I was with whoever I gave the assignment to, and give the rest to whoever did the actual homework, now I want to be a talent agent. 
I hopped in my friend's pool for $40. All my buddies pitched in a pool. It was right before the pool was cleaned for the summer too. It was the nastiest pool I've ever seen. I stripped to my boxes, hopped in, hopped out, grabbed my clothes and headed home which was only a couple blocks away. As I was leaving the premises I walked right past my friend's dad who was working on his car. He gave me the weirdest look. To be fair I was walking in boxes and sneakers and had my clothes over my shoulder. All I said was I just made $40 hopping in your pool and kept walking. He started cracking up and I went home showered and went back over. It was easy money to cause I was walking home from school and was headed home anyways. Let some dude I worked with take speedo underwear pictures of me. Didn't realize he was a pervert until it was too late. Don't ask. I was an actual idiot. Drank a whole bottle of malt vinegar. At first it was for just paying for a 5 guys burger but the guy gave me 40 bucks instead. My buddy patted my back as I was leaving and I fell on my knees puking. My friend licked a manhole cover for $2. Manhole became his nickname, which took on a dual meaning later when he came out of the closet. If you are new to the channel, you can subscribe. I publish new videos every day. Until then, check another video. for now.